So are you an ex-Muslim? Yeah, ex-Muslim. Ex-Muslim. Hold on, wait. You're you're the guy that I'm. Uh, you're the guy that you were. Wa- I've seen it the other day. You were watching that other dude. I don't know the David guy who was like eating the Quran mm-hmm. or, or something. That's you. You're watching. You 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 watch him eat the Quran. Yeah, yeah. I was there. With and, and and you were like you did a video or something ripping up the Quran and stuff. Don't you? Wow, think, like, man, that's dirty, man. Yeah, don't you think that there's a different way to like share your opinions and, and, and you know because share your ideas instead of like you know disrespecting the Quran and and ripping it and eating it and acting like complete hooligans. Of course, I think there's a different way to represent these things. I mean, we could talk about uh, what my motives are and what ex-Muslim motives are uh, yeah, but all, all day long. But, but of course, there is a different way to express your opinions. And to be very honest, I don't think there is any point in ripping up a Quran. I think it's a completely unnecessary. So why did, you, why did you do that? I did <laughs> it, seemed like, it, seemed, yeah, it seemed like you were egging it on because, you know, like, like I understand you're ex-Muslim and uh, you, you have your own faith at the end of the day. You know, everybody, Muslims have their own faith at the end of the day. But like... It seems like you have like this vendetta against Muslims. No, you know, no. like, I did like you're, you're an ex Muslim, but you, you represent I'm an ex Muslim. Like, you know, like, you know, the reason it's an ex is like it should be in the past. Am I right? Like, I don't know. Like, no, I did that for a very, uh, for a very specific reason. When I ripped up the Quran uh, on that show, for example, I uh, explained very clearly why I was ripping up the Quran as I was doing it. So if people actually want to go there and see yeah, what I was saying the, as I was ripping the, up the Quran, what's the, no, no, what I was saying what's is the that, explanation um, to like ripping the Quran? Like, the we'll tell us here that, instead of going on to your like tell us here like of course the, no, I, will, I will i will explain it to you just let me speak i will explain it to you yeah uh so i i am doing my ex-muslim work right and there was there was a lot of back and forth between between me and muslims and it's it's all going uh well as, as it maybe should i don't know but uh recently between me and uh muhammad hijab and ali dawah there has been a lot of yeah uh, no, but this is a, not a even of, about no no so sorry to cut you, no, this is not about muhammad hijab ali dawah it is, or to, it is, it is. I, I don't even, we don't even care about them we're not de- defending Wait. them at all we're defending okay. islam and the quran i know yeah. I you know, know but, you ripping up the quran it's like what what's your defense you're you're mentioning them Muhammad Adam, and Hijab Adam, and Ali Dawa talk? have nothing to do with you ripping the Quran. Will You're disrespecting now, that, billions. That, that's what I'm trying no. to say. You disrespect. Okay, will it, will it, let me talk. But it has to do with this. The whole protest. So it, it no, was it doesn't have up, to do with ripping up the they Quran. They have nothing was an act to of protest. It, it was an, an act, act of protest, protest to, to rip up. protest. What? You know how much people you're offending? You're offending so many are you, people. Are you going to let for me no speak? reason? Are you going do, to do, let do, me speak? Do, do you believe about like right and wrong as an ex-Muslim? Like, do you believe so, in right and wrong? Of course I do. But come on, I do came you, like, here. Do, I came here. Do you think I that what you do so is right? Can, I came here so we can we can exchange exchange. Yeah, we're just asking. Yeah, yeah. Are, are, I'm asking you a question. Like, do you, do you think what you did was right though? Like, do, do you think that's right? I think it was right. Yes. You think ripping up the. So that's how just do you think, because you disagree you think, with a certain think, group of people, do you think killing you're gonna, people you're gonna, who don't believe in Islam is right? N- no, we do not. We do not condone of killing. We do not. Do you think sending? Well, anyway, rape, if someone, do you think sending veiled rape threats? To no, people's if lives anyone wrong. changes their religion or anything, we don't. We don't condone killing or nothing. Islamically, no. if you kill one person, it's like you kill of all humanity. That's how precious a life is in Islam. But you are aware you know that, right? that according to Islam, uh, as someone who leaves Islam and who openly says that he left Islam is supposed to be put to death. This yeah, is according but, to all Islamic jurisdiction. No, no, we do not. We do not condone of killing anyone. You you must have had a but Adam, misunderstanding. Uh, Hold on, when you were Muslim, yeah. I feel like you must have had a misunderstanding. No, yeah. I feel like and. Have it's not, got to the point where you're ripping them. Have you not recently made a response video to uh to me and Al Dawa even made a response video in which Al Dawa clearly this, this said this isn't about Al Dawa or Muhammad Hijab. This isn't about Al-Dawa them. It seems like said that I it has nothing. I don't care about Al Dawa. I don't care about Muhammad Hijab. I'm talking about you. Okay. Why are you ripping up the Quran and you th- you thinking it's right? Because it's an act of why are you ripping up st- and you're eating the, the Quran. Fact, you look the, like a child. And the fact that you're trying to back it up as is like some for some protest. Like come on, that's a, that's 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 a petty excuse, my friend. You're Look, disrespecting. Ali, I don't know if I should Ali call Dawa, you Ali Dawa recently made a video in which Ali he Dawa, Muhammad that Hajab, I deserve Ali Dawa, to be Muhammad, put you love to them. death. That I deserve no, to be they, put to death. No, we do not to. condone. We do not. No one, none of, none of us condone. So you do death not agree that people should be put to death for not, believing Islam. We do not condone. No, 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 we don't. no death, man. We don't. I'm so, I feel bad. Human life is all of humanity. You, you must have, Look that up. You must then, have misunderstood. Then why, did you, then why did you put Allahu Akbar under Ali Dawa's video? Allahu Akbar means God is greatest. Why did you agree with his video? Allahu Akbar if you were. I should be killed. Allahu Akbar means God is the greatest. It means God is the greatest. Did you well, forget that? Or no? it, depend, Muslim, it depends on like, like, the way you you take it. Like Allahu Akbar probably to you means some other crazy things because you probably see things in the media mm-hmm. and that probably that's affecting your you know your small brain. But you have to understand that like 
it means Slim, Slim, if you look you it both, up, both, it's called I God. Don't, I don't think both of you are uh, above intelligent people. I could now sit oh, here. Oh wow! And, Stop insult, playing. In, insult you said, intelligence. I mean, you, I, I, mean you're, I, I don't think you're intelligent either. You rip Qurans for protests. I could sit here and call. <laughs> There's so many different ways to protest. I have a question though. I have a question. But it's not about Ali Dawa. It's not about Muhammad. This is this is very childish. I didn't come here to insult you, and I don't. Yeah. No, no. I'm not insulting you. I'm trying. We're trying to understand you. Like I'm really. I'm very trying to understand you. You're not letting me speak for five seconds. Or speak, speak, speak. You're insulting. Me. You're you're uh, you're interrupting me. Whatever I said, I haven't. I, I didn't. Haven't I never said apus. I never said apus or nothing. I yes, never said nothing. You, you typed it here on the screen. You typed apus right here on the screen. I thought honestly, <laughs> I thought that was you know. I, I don't know why. I you thought you knew it was apus too. Call bro. yourself a prophet, you know. Yeah, of course. But um, course, uh, yeah. um, yeah. So as I was saying, I have a question. I have a question. Why, like, like, why is it when someone you know leaves Islam, they end up putting like. You know, everywhere in their bios and everywhere, like, oh, ex Muslim, ex Muslim. They're always, it's like Islam is live, living rent free in their heads. Like, what's the point of that? Will you let me explain that? that? Yes, I will, I will let okay. you explain that. How about this? Let me give me two minutes. Give me two, two minutes, minutes and I will explain it to you, okay? You're going to have two minutes for what? I will explain to you why uh, an ex Muslim like me, for example, or other ex Muslims speak out against Islam and put it on their bios. I will explain it to you. Do you, do you give me two minutes and promise me not to not to interrupt? You need two minutes. Two you, minutes. You look at your phone. You can't answer it from your heart. Fine. fine. Give me. <laughs> can you give me answer one it minute. from your soul? You <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm setting a timer. Can, can you a give timer. me two minutes? Can you give me two minutes to explain to explain why why well, people are why ex Muslims talk about Islam? You, you know what? Talk. Before, how about this? How about this? <laughs> I know you. You kind of you, you offered to be on our on our podcast and stuff like yeah. that and you you were i don't know i feel like in a way i feel like you you know that we're not really knowledgeable you you say that oh you're not logical about islam you, you shouldn't be saying that at all you know what i'm saying we we still like we're muslim at the end of the day but we there's more scholars there's islam scholars there's people who know who are very knowledgeable they go to school for it and they know so we have we have a friend we have a friend of ours who's gonna come and you know talk to talk to all of us and uh who's more knowledgeable about this so come on in He's very educated, so like, you know what I'm saying? Hold it down. Huh? He's, well, he's a very good uh, friend of ours. Who's who's knowledgeable and would know like- He's just, he's, cause he, he, I want him to like be able to ha like- Who, who is, is he going to join Exchange like, like words I, I, with you I, I, as I well. He's going to come in. Yo. Where's where he at? Huh, huh. Where's he at? What? In the meantime, if you want to talk about- Yeah. Your two minute timer thing. Okay, Here, sure. Here's a I'll chance. Here's it. a chance while he comes in. So, you have asked me why uh, people who leave Islam are so obsessed with Islam and why they make it so uh, open that they have left Islam and, and why they talk about Islam. Let me tell you that there are many ex Muslims in the world, including me. I grew up with Islam. I was extremely religious when I was a. Uh, unmute them. Muslim. Unmute them. Uh, unmute. Un unmute. Ask mm. unmute. Ask unmute. No, 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 not him. Oh, wait a minute. Go. No, ask the, the bottom. Yeah, that one. Ask unmute. All uh, right. So go on, go on. I'm sorry. Go on. I was extremely religious when I was a Muslim. Uh, I believed in Islam very firmly. I was raised until when? So until when? What's until your nationality, when? by the way? I just want to know Tur your nationality. Turkish. Turkish. I was raised with it. My parents are uh, very religious. I was in very religious environments, and uh, after after leaving Islam, like many other Muslims, like many other ex-Muslims, I was basically shunned, basically rejected by society. I, but my situation is not very bad. I live in America freely right now. I have uh, burned the bridges. I've come here. I'm I'm free, and I can do and say whatever I want. But it's not about me. It's about so many other people. In, in over 12 countries, it is officially punishable by death to leave Islam. And leaving Islam leaving Islam is today, in 2020, officially punishable by death. In many other countries, it is forbidden. In many other countries, it's a social taboo. People persecute and, 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 and uh, you know, punish their kids and their, uh, their, their loved ones, their known ones for leaving Islam. So people live under persecution if they leave Islam. So your entire life is affected by Islam. And afterwards, if you decide not to believe in it, just because you don't believe in it, you are also followed and persecuted for that. So it is completely normal that somebody who leaves Islam, whose entire life was defined by the fears of Islam and by the introductions of Islam, uh, also uh, leaves uh, Islam. We, we have a friend here who's more, um, uh, I, I feel will not, like he's I will way not, more. I will not talk to Mohammed Tijab. Mohammed Tijab is he, insulted, he's really, has insulted he's, my wife. He's, he's really not. Oh, no, 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 no. You've, you've disrespected. You bro, you've disrespected. No, I, I, Quran, I, 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 you ripped do, up the I do not, I do not care. And then, and then you talk Muhammad about Hijab is a scumbag. Relax. Who has it's not about Muhammad Hijab. Down. No, it's calm not down. about him. Muhammad Hijab about is a scumbag. Yeah. Who has calm I, I have made an, I have made a debate offer. Shut the hell, shut the hell up. I have, you, you are scared. You are scared. Everybody, 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 everybody. 
Like a a debate offer. Seems like you're running away. I made a debate offer to Mohammed Hijab. I made a debate offer to Mohammed Hijab. He can't hear us. He can't hear any of us. He can't hear any of us. Oh, I made a debate offer to Mohammed Hijab. Mohammed Hijab accepted my debate offer because I'm defend. I can't hear any of you on Zoom. Unmute. Unmute. Unmute on Zoom. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Can you? Okay, I'm Mohammed. Go come to Zencaster. Mohammed Hijab is is here on Zencaster. No, it's it's all right. I'm uh. We, we're here. Can you hear us here? I can hear you guys, but he's gonna have to unmute if he wants to engage. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Um, uh, can you unmute your uh, microphone? I could do that. Yeah. Can you hear us now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I haven't, I haven't been paying attention to what you've been saying because I haven't, I can't actually hear. Uh, anything. Yeah. So pretty much, uh, as I was yeah. saying, we were telling him about um, his childish acts that he was doing. Yeah. Uh, ripping the Quran and uh, watching that guy eat the Quran, and he's trying to defend himself, but he just yeah. kept on mentioning your name, Ali Dawah's name, which I feel right. like is childish. It, it has nothing to do with Muhammad Hijab or Ali Dawah. This is right. about you disrespecting, you know, the Quran. Like, what kind of, there's different ways to share your opinion. Okay. Uh, I, I, have to, I have to say something very quickly. Yeah. Um, you yeah. have, Adam and uh, Slim, you have invited me here today. Uh, yes. Acted, 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 acted as if you were very genuine people, texted me no, and said... No, we're here. You wanted to be on a podcast. Oh, we have someone and who's not... That I would, and said that I would be talking yeah. here to, 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 to the we two We are talking. Of, to the two we of We are three. talking. You, you didn't say anything about Muhammad Hijab. I wouldn't okay, have come we're here. Talking. Yeah, I he's wouldn't, a friend of ours. He's a friend of ours. He's a friend of ours. He wouldn't have sorry. come here. He helped us, brother. It's, he helped us. I'm sorry. I would, not, I would not have come here if Muhammad Hijab was here because course, I made a why? debate offer to Muhammad Hijab, which Muhammad well, Hijab clearly right rejected. Afterwards, after what Muhammad Hijab said, told me to commit suicide. He harassed my Listen, wife. No, he tried to we're dox on, me. On, he tried to dox me. He made death threats. He harassed people's family. He tried to dox me. Look, listen. He also excused people. Let him talk. 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 I mean, you can go if you want to. That's just gonna. It's just gonna say something about your spirit here. It will say something well, about you. Good. Everybody, you I'm making like. a video about you right now. I made you no, a debate no, 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 You no, ran away. You, you are a you pussy. Please, you are scared. Please. Please. Can you stop? Calm, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Is, one person You seem triggered. You seem. You are a bunch of unreliable, dishonest. Listen, listen, listen. I came here in good faith. Dishonest? We didn't say nothing. I came here in good faith. Listen, of all due respect, I mean, what we can do now... I have is... no... You, stop speaking respect. to me about... Don't okay, speak to no me about problem. respect. Let, Will you okay, take no back problem, what you have no said? Problem. Will you have take no back problem, everything no that you have problem. said? Let's, I will not listen, listen to you. Will you take listen, back everything listen, that you have finish, said? Let's, people let's, are let's, listen, give me a chance to speak. Give me a chance to speak. Hey, sure, all I'm saying all I'm saying now, putting all of the hostilities and the toxicities to the side... I will not put it aside. Oh Well, if you can't manage that, right? If you can't manage that, then you can't manage freedom of speech. <laughs> that, has, that has nothing to do with that. That is you're not okay how freedom to, of speech you're works. You're okay to eat up and laugh at it and rip it up. But when you, you have doing your understanding of philosophy, that, that is not everybody. That is not what freedom of speech is about. Listen, freedom of speech, I'm, I'm freedom I'm of speech is about the fact that I can say something. I'm not, April, I'm, look, I'm not being insulting to you right now. Yeah, I'm you have been insulting enough. I'm listen, listen, sorry, please. You're a person who refutes Islam intellectually. That's at least the claim that you make. It's All I'm doing now, we're people that have much bigger platforms than you. We're giving you a chance, okay, as an unqualified person who, as you are, Shut to actually make a case up. You have made your, Islam. You have no, made your no, name. You have look, made no, your no, name no, by no, attacking. Please, 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 don't tell me about giving people relax, platforms. Please, 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 please. We're giving you a chance. No, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say you this. Have, you have made your name by attacking. Don't talk about. Don't talk about. Just for a second. Just for a second. Stop being emotional. Stop being emotional. Be calm. All we're saying is, look. If you have a case against Islam, all I want to hear now is your strongest argument. I will against not talk Islam. to you. I will not talk to you. Say your strongest Just argument. We're saying say it. Your say your strongest, strongest argument, argument against Islam. I'm happy to I hear. I will, I will. I will not talk to you. I will. Do you have an argument? Listen, listen. Muhammad, Muhammad Hijab, you have to talk to me. You are Muhammad talking Hijab. to me. Yeah. Muhammad Hijab. You have to talk. You, look, you are talking to me. You have a, you have an opportunity now to speak in front of millions of Muslims. I will. I have made you an offer in which we were going to talk about. You have a chance. The floor is yours. The floor is yours. In front of millions of people. Once Millions of people, on, this is your chance. Yeah. This is your chance. What we're saying is... I have is, made you one listen, offer to do exactly that. This is exactly your chance in front of millions of people. Refused. 
Listen, no. put the offensive this is, aside for this now. Is, this Wait, is not how we do this. This is not look, how we look, do this. Listen, you said you would love this. Is not how we came on. You said you would love this. You seem jittery. Don't be jittery. This, don't be scared. I'm not. Shut the hell up. This is not okay, about calm being down, scared. Calm down. Stop being angry. Stop being so damn condescending. Take a chill pill. Stop being so damn condescending. Okay. Stop being so damn condescending. You know what I feel like? I'm gonna talk right now. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk. No, no, no. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk. You know what I feel like? I feel like you were trying to take advantage of me and Slim because we're not knowledgeable. Mohammed Hajjaj is a friend of ours. He's a friend of ours. He is very educated. He is he is uh, inspiring. Why are you taking off your headphones? Put your headphones on. Can you hear us? Let me speak. All right, speak. Let let me speak. 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 Please do. Please God, do. let me speak. Let's hear. Let he said. Speak. We just said present your strongest I argument. I cannot hear you. Let me plan. speak. All right. We're letting you speak. Go ahead. Number one. Let me speak. Number one, I made it. I made an offer to Mohammed Hijab, which was very clear in the very beginning, which was that we are going to have an online debate. That is the fairest discourse that you could possibly imagine. Right this imagine. is not about having, this imagine. is not about this. Look, look. Oh. Well, let, let me talk, let me talk. He's, all right, he's using that excuse right now because you keep interrupting. All right, listen, listen. You made an offer to debate him, it right? It was the fairest right. offer that you, you could possibly offer now. in the world to What's have, an, to have an actual, to have now. an actual... Because you are not letting me talk. Do you see the difference? The difference okay. between a debate would be that I would have 20 minutes to talk. Mohamed Hijab would have 22 yeah. minutes to talk. Yeah, it yeah, would be in nobody's right control. Okay. Well, Nobody could interrupt I'm anybody. And we could talk. And we could talk. No, I'm not going to talk excuse. about you on your platform. Number two, number two. Number two. Number two. Adam Saleh that's and Slip. I have offered you a very clear choice and said I will come well, to you and, and talk to and minutes. talk to and talk to Ali Dawa and you it, two it seems like about our religious here. beliefs. Did I do that or did I not look, do look, that? Look, can I say something? Can I respond? Can I respond? Can I respond? To can I respond? Muhammad, Muhammad, talk. Muhammad, talk. Yeah, look, look. All I'm saying is this, right? Putting all of the negotiations aside for the debate. Look, we're here, here and now. People on your side and my side, they want to hear an engagement. If you want me to be, with all due respect, with all due respect, we don't like each other, that's fine. You can put that to the side. You're here in front of a fresh new audience of Muslim people, all right? We're giving you a chance as um, someone who is a critic of Islam, a polemic against Islam, to produce your strongest argument against it. Now, what I'm going to say is this. Is, look, I'm happy to stay quiet. For as long as you want me to stay quiet right now, if you say, look, stay quiet for five minutes, stay quiet for 10 minutes, I will, I will be muted for that time. Okay. And then I'll have the same time to, to, yeah, I, I can't, I can't see what's going on. What is this so childish? What are you doing? What are you doing? This is so, uh, I don't so know. Not, yeah, look, look, right. Let's talk about now. Let's talk about now. Let's have our conversation let's now. Conversation no, should we pull now. up your tweets? We're going to pull up your tweets here. You want to pull up tweets? Let's pull up your childish tweets into the stuff. You, you, like, you, you, you are making rape you are making rape implications yeah, about my wife. You are making rape threats about my wife. That's not about you're your making, wife. You're making you're rape about, implications you're about, about your my wife. wife. And that's that's aside the point. That's, it doesn't say your wife anywhere there. It says you're making rape implications about my wife, about and you're that's that's seriously with your wife. That has and you're seriously you expecting you me. Them, you Look, said you, you have a chance. Mohammed Hijab, what would happen if I insulted your wife sexually? What does it say your wife there? Right here. This is my wife. No, that doesn't say when these Islamophobes. That's these are the pronouns. What would happen if I insulted your wife? You can do it. It's freedom of speech. You can do that if you like. Yeah. You know, what, would it, would it be? Is it freedom no, no, of speech? No, no, it is. You insult my prophet. You eat the Quran. You rip it up. How, I mean, how about how about Ali Dawa telling me that so you I should have my friend? You, how about Ali Dawa telling me that I should have sex with my three-year-old son? Your wife how about is a that? public figure. Your wife is no, online she, on a public. public public figure by definition is she, look, she, has, uh, she has a public profile she's, she's open where to people know her, her just speech. by her name my why friend, is it my that freedom of speech is figure. only applicable when that it's that is not what freedom of speech is about freedom exactly. of speech exactly. why, why can you rip up the Quran why can you speak the okay. Quran but then okay. when we come back right and do something against the public figure which you might find distasteful you're you're now panicking and having an anxiety attack <laughs> Mohammed Jab. Why has the cat got you are, your tongue? You are an intellectual. Why has the cat got God. your tongue? You are an intellectual. Why are you insulting him? Why are you insulting him? Why don't you produce your strongest argument against the same? Are you stupid? Are you stupid? I'm the guy is sitting there insulting me. I'm responding to him. He's not insulting you. He's insulting you. Look, I'm saying to you, look, if you want 10 minutes, I will be muted. Listen. I don't, look, don't worry about insults. Insults are freedom of speech. That's what no, you believe. No, they're not. That's, that's yes, not how it works. They are freedom of speech. That is not how it works. I, look, I, look, with all due respect. You have yeah, no understanding of, of philosophy. Students. That is not how freedom of speech I have four works. degrees to my name. Four. Yeah, you don't know anything about four. it. Freedom of speech. You have any, yes, that is name, not what freedom of speech is. And one of those, by the way, is in political philosophy, which is by, about freedom of speech. By bearded Islamists, that's where you got your philosophy degrees. What are your degrees? What are your degrees? It doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter to you. You don't. It doesn't matter to you. 
it you, doesn't you matter to you. You don't have a, do you don't have, have a basic authority. understanding of freedom of speech. You do not have the authority to tell me what you think freedom of speech is. I have actually written books on liberalism. I don't care. If you, you, if you if contradict my professors, my professors, when they were peer reviewing them, they didn't tell me that I was wrong about my understandings of freedom of speech. Okay, can you claim it? Can you tell me this then? Yeah. According to you, does freedom of speech mean that you can say whatever you want and nobody should get angry about this? Well, according to liberal philosophers like John Stuart Mill, yeah, and his book on utilitarianism and other books like On Liberty and so on, freedom of speech is only curtailed by the harm principle. And for him, freedom, the harm principle entails physical harm. There were some things that he mentioned in his book that he saw was distasteful, right? So, for example, people having sexual intercourse, he said things that affect the sensibilities of people. So, for example, people having sexual intercourse in the, uh, on the roadsides, John Stuart Mill um, saw that as something which is unethical. But in terms of me insulting, the freedom to insult is not something which is censored by people, freedom of speech advocates, including those philosophical, the founding, philosophical founding fathers. Now, my point is this, is, is very happy, it's very happy days for you when you come up and rip the Quran and eat it and spit it out. It's freedom of speech. But when I, oh, no, no, hold on. But when I don't, within the scope of the law, because to this day, there's no police officer that has contacted me. And believe you me, there is no court injunction against me. All the things that I've said on Twitter are by law, UK law and US law, absolutely within the full scope of the law and i'm waiting for a court order i'm waiting for an injunction to prove me otherwise there's nothing within the the spirit or letter of the law nor was that my question within the parameters of freedom of speech as per liberal ethics that stop me from insulting you and your your wife who has a public figure platform attacking islam and calling the prophet of islam all kinds of names if you can't question? if you can't handle yes if you cannot handle yeah the freedom of speech when it comes back at you, do not try and give it to people, a community of people, by eating, spitting out the Quran, laughing at the Quran, and so on and so forth. Because that would imply that you are a person of weakness. You're was that my question? Yeah, yeah. So th that, that's, that, that answers your question. Okay, let me respond. Was that my question? Do you really think that was my question? What's your question? Just repeat it for yourself. Was that really my question? What was your my question? Que my question was, according to your understanding of freedom of speech, yeah. does freedom of speech mean that you can say whatever you want and no one can be angered about it? No, not and whatever you want. There are laws of libel. There are laws of defamation. There are laws of copyright. There that's are not the point. Laws. So there are and your freedom of speech, does, yeah. your freedom of, does freedom of speech, according to you, mean that no one can be angry about it? About what you well, we're angry about you eating and spitting out the Quran and you, you and David... Exactly. Of course, you can. I mean, it doesn't matter. I, I, you, if you don't want to play by the rules, don't do the things that aggravate other communities. Well, that was not my, what my question was about because you are making it look we like... Angry. We can be angry. You are, you are making it look like uh, I have no right to be angry and to refuse to talk to you Your anger because is you insult him. Because you mind has got nothing to do with you want to debate him, though. You offer to debate him and when you have the yeah, opportunity to Muhammad debate him, him no, no, your no, face is irrelevant. Your you anger, see you see your this. anger, the truth doesn't care about your anger. Everybody, everybody, do you see this? This is exactly why I'm not wanting to have this, this conversation. Why? Because, I'm here, I'm here like, trying, what, what, I'm here trying to give you a response, and you haven't even let me talk. Go ahead, and, but, come on, man. I, never you, talk, you, the more you will genuinely talk about is responding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Okay, I will include this in my upcoming video about you, Mohammed Tijab. Uh, I, I think you think you can evade that, but uh, I have a video up, upcoming about you in which I will demonstrate can you, can, this. Okay, yo, this is not about Mohammed Tijab. This isn't about Ali Dawa or anybody. I don't know if you're in love with him or something, but this is about you ripping up the Quran and, and laughing at people eating the Quran and talking about urinating on the Quran on your Twitter. Is, like, is this, this is this worse? Is this worse than telling people that they should be put to death for? This guy, no, no, we, we don't condone. Any, look, you're for, childish. Believe it for leaving your faith. You're complaining about insulting, and then you're doing something. Is this insulting. is this is this worse? No, 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 no. Is this worse? What about what about the, what about worse than telling people that they should be It doesn't wrong. affect us when you, you do it. Right and wrong. I sometimes I put, to... I put the Quran in. I can burn. Hey. And I can put it it's, in water. It's it great affect. that it doesn't affect you. It's great. It's fantastic that it doesn't affect what's you. Your, what's your point by doing that? But is it? But is this worse so than lame. telling people? So and telling Honestly, people that they should be like a fool right now. Right? Look, this, is, this, is your defense. this is your defense. What we're saying is, we're not saying that you should be no. killed. Let me put that on the record. Let me put that on the record. You brought, you brought it up. I'm responding to you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me put it to people they should be killed. Let me. Well, Apus, listen. I'm telling you right in front of you. Fuck up. Don't call me Apus, okay?
I can get it. Answer, like. answer, answer me a question. Answer, answer me a question, Mama. Exactly. Okay. You, 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 you have talked enough. I have gave you the time to respond. Why would answer, you me, answer me one question. 7,000 miles answer away. Me, answer me one question. Yeah, go ahead. Adam, Adam Saleh and uh, Slim El Bahir here were not uh, convinced that this is the response. According to uh, to Islam, under an, Islam, under, under an Islamic under an Islamic your government, un- unqualified under... understanding of it. Yeah, you're you're not qualified, are you? Let's be honest. You don't have any training in Islam, do you? That's true. That's you true. Are, you are <laughs> you don't have any training. Do you have according, any training? In Islam? According to Islam, you're according to Islam, by your own admission. So why are you saying according to Islam? You should say according to my understanding of Islam. Which I'm is... asking. You, I'm asking you a question. Can oh, I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I ask you a question about the Islamic yeah, rules? Yeah, yes, according to you can, can I ask, ask you a question? Ask the educator, the question, yes. You are an idiot. Can I ask you a question uh, no, uh, about the Islamic rulings ahead, according to ahead. my understanding? You don't even have the brain to think about this. I, I'm I, asking you a question about ask your me. Islamic rulings. According, according to the Islamic jurisdiction, according to Islam, according to the Islamic, yeah. the Islamic, the Islamic prudence, whatever, yeah. according to... Yeah, Dude, that's, it, it's, my, it's my third language. While you, while you spend time going into... Answer the question. According to Islam, Somebody who leaves Islam, i.e. Yep. me or other people, somebody who leaves Islam yep. and makes it public yes. that they have left Islam yes. and explains to the public yep. that they have left Islam and why yep. they have left Islam. Yep. Is this person to be put to death under Islam? Well, I've written a book on this. It's actually called... Just the, the question. You don't need to write well, a book about it. Just well, I just, just want to put to you that I've written a book on this, which is actually my dissertation for one of my degrees, which I got a distinction in, and which was peer-reviewed by two people in... Two liberal people, by my, my ad, and given a distinction. So I think this will be a professional answer here, not like yours. My answer is this. It really depends on the situation. I'm not saying to you that Islam, the only ruling in Islam is that the person who is a public apostate is to be put to death. In fact, in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi had a negotiation with uh, Suhail ibn Amr, in that treaty, there was a clear um, parenthesis put in place or a clause, a stipulation put in place, whereby uh, apostates would be actually redirected or strategically relocated. For that reason, Ibn Qayyim al jawziyyah and many of the scholars, in fact, from my reading, the majority of scholars say, it's possible that a public apostate, and listen carefully, I'm answering your question directly, a public apostate, just like yourself, not just within the Western world, but within an Islamic state, uh, is not actually put to death and is strategically located uh, to another country, for example, a safe haven. And that is not despite the Islamic law, that is because of it. And the reason, and the evidence of that is the Hadith in Bukhari, which is the, as you know, the most authoritative Hadith book, which stipulates this point. Uh, on, on, on the kitab of, um, sorry, the, the hadith of uh, Suhail ibn Amr. So in other words, what I actually recommend in my book, which is ironic, I say that in this day and age, my position is not that apostates, even in Muslim countries, this is my position, even in Muslim countries, which claim to rule by Islamic law, I proposed in the book, yes, in the book, I proposed that it would be within the maslaha, the common interest of the Muslim people, yeah, to make peace treaties, the like of which was seen by the Prophet Muhammad himself, with non-Muslim countries, such that uh, apostates in certain Muslim countries are not to be put to death, and in fact are strategically located to other non-Muslim countries uh, in a way to protect their life. And in fact, if you go against such treaty, according to the scholars that I've mentioned, Ibn Qayyim al jawziyyah Al-Mirdawi and others, who actually mentioned this very explicitly in their uh, jurisprudential tracts, if you go against this, then that would be something which is seen as immoral because it goes against the contractual agreements. It says in Surah Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 1, Ya ayyuhaladzina amanu, awfu bil aqud. Oh, you have believed, uh, be faithful to your contracts. And that includes contracts with disbelieving nations. It inclu- includes contracts with uh, non-Muslim nations and so on and so on. So my position actually is this. If there is a country now that wants to rule by Islamic law, I do not think it uh, within the common interest of that particular country to exercise that particular law of apostasy. I think it is within full the full scope of the jurisprudential uh, Islamic uh, allowance, as well as the law for that Muslim country to make a peace treaty with other non-Muslim countries such that there will be a strategic uh, relocation. Uh, and that is my position on the matter. Yes, of course, in history, there have been times where there have been public apostasies. But in the book that I've written, 
and, and the capital punishment employed. But that's not the position that I think is most beneficial for the world today. And I think, uh, actually, my historical analysis, when I did a historical analysis, I looked at uh, America and I looked at Turkey, which are countries... Well, you are contradicting with the, uh, with, with, with the historical consensus in Islamic jurisprudence. Well, actually, I've just mentioned to you... No, you, you're saying I'm contradicting it. I'm giving no, you, you evidence you, from... It, it is very clear that you are when there's no difference of opinion. I've just told you Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah... That's, that's not what consensus Zed means. Ma'ad, Zed Ma'ad, sorry. He the majority mentioned consensus that is that... How can is it be that, consensus? The majority consensus is that apostates are to be put to death, which is... No, you're, you're forcing, you're forcing your world view on Look, I am you're, forcing. You're, there are you're, several you're, countries. You're there are several us. countries in the world to, in the world today that have Look, this. I'm not saying. I, according that, to you, listen, listen. I don't know what you want me to say. I'm telling if, you if, what you don't want to hear, maybe. But I'm telling you, it's possible. No, I'm, yes, you are, you are being dishonest because you you came here listen, before listen, and you excuse. As you know, as you know, I'm not. I'm not shy to say something outrageous. I'm a wild character. If I want to, I'll say something I, outrageous. I, think I have no problem. I'm telling you what what it is that I've looked at from the books that I've read and the scholars that I've spoken to, all of them agree with me, yes? That actually it's c completely conceivable and totally allowable within a Muslim nation that a Muslim nation does a peace treaty with a non-Muslim nation and the apost a public apostates that come out and say, we are public apostates. We are against the Prophet Muhammad. We are against the, just like you. And even, you know, so on and so forth. Maybe not just like you actually, but someone who does all that stuff. And then they can be... What would happen to you? Well, it depends on what you want to do. If you are a public apostate and just if, go if, ahead, I, if I did if I did exactly what I'm doing right now in, in in the ideal Islamic country, what would happen to me? Well, look, if you did what you're doing right now in an ideal Islamic country, I'm sure there will be vigilantes, okay, that will take that will take the law into their own hands. I'm not. Ta there's a difference between what the civilians do, yes, and what the the, the law says. In an ideal Islamic well, country, would probably kill me. it's like okay. asking me if I, do you know, this, there was a film called Die Hard 3, you know, uh, I used to watch films when I was younger, Die Hard with a Vengeance. And then, you know, Bruce Willis, he came with this, uh, with this postage saying, I hate niggers. Sorry to say the word, but he, he said, I hate niggers. And he went to Harlem, you know, Harlem. And then, yeah, and then these yeah. guys saw him and they were going to kill him. Well, I'm not going to tell you that if you were living in a Muslim majority place and you're ripping up the Quran in front of, in Pakistan or someplace, that you're going to be fine. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to lie. Not I'm not talking yeah, about I'm, I'm up talking the Quran. To you about I'm laws. Doing. I'm talking to you about what's okay. conceivable. That uh, was my question. What, 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 what about the law? Yeah, the law. What I'm saying to you is, I've just told you what the law is. Public no, you, you, you said you said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you said not said, like in, me. In the, from the law perspective, it's, it's totally conceivable, as I've just mentioned, right? And do you know what I've said is the book that the book that I've written, which is called the uh, 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 a public. Uh, sorry, I can't remember. It's a treatise. I said it's, it's called. Um, uh, critique, uh, critiques of the public, uh, the liberal critiques to Ridda. That's the name of the book. That's the, I've, I've forgot the name of the book. It's called the uh, liberal critiques to Ridda. Okay. And this book, what I, what I actually show historically is this, because I'm sure you're aware you're a Turkish speaking person. You can actually access now online, the majority of Ottoman archives. And a, a lot of it will be in Ottoman language. So it's actually not even in Arabic, but this is, it's kind of Arabic script, but it's Ottoman Turkish, right? So we had a translator who looked at from the period of, say, uh, Bazayid the, uh, the second, which is about 1517, all the way up to uh, when the end of the Ottoman Empire. We looked at that, and we also looked at uh, America. And what we found was quite uh, intriguing, actually, because what we found is that there were some acts in America, for example, burning of flags, um, and so on and so forth, which were prosecuted by death. And I show you the case studies in the book. And so this was a symbolic act. It wasn't a military act. It was seen as treacherous and treasonous. And in the same way, there were some uh, instances like that in the Ottoman Empire. What I found quite interesting, though, was that the Ottoman judges were less, way more reluctant to exercise apostasy laws. The, in terms of uh, the primary source materials that is referenced in the book, and you can check it out. You're beating around the bush so much right now. You have I, access I can't to, even, I can't uh, even maybe directly. So you can check out actually on an implementation level, how much this was actually implemented. By the way, I'm not trying to say, and I want to make this very clear, I'm not trying to say that there is no such thing um, as the capital punishment in Islam for non-allegiance non to the state, which is like Ridda. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that there is maneuverability within the law, the scope, the scope of the law. So such that a, a hakim, if you like a ruler, can there's a scope of maneuverability there. And what I'm saying is, and this is not a reform position, it's not a liberal position, this is within the traditionalist discourse. And I think people like you should actually listen to people like me. Because if I if I if I get my way, right, if if I had my recommendation in place, then in fact the world would be, in your world, a safer place, in your understanding.
So why, con- why are you condemn, trying to force me? Do you condemn why the killing of a Force me to want to kill you people like you. I don't want to because kill I don't you. believe you. Look, you don't have to believe me. I've, do, I've given do you, you evidence. Do you, con- do you condemn the killing of apostates? Look, do you condemn it? Yeah, because if you kill apostates guy. now, it, it, there is no there, there is no law Wait, and order. So there you no condemn you, you condem- condem- it. I would you never, condemn capital punishment I, I, for apostasy. I, I, I absolutely condemn. Do you condemn? Do you condemn your friend Aladawa telling me that I should be punished? I absolutely condemn. The killing of apostates, because that is completely against fantastic. law and order. Apostates, listen, I, I say to you something. You know there's a hadith, and we're talking about primary source materials now. Mm-hmm. Hudayfa bin Yaman, he's a sahabi. He had a list of individuals who, for all intents and purposes, they were munafiqeen, they were people who had lost their faith. And, all, and the list of all of those individuals, including Abdullah bin Salul and others, those individuals, none of them were killed. Why? Even though all of them were not, they were not sympathetic to Muhammad. In fact, they, were, they went against him. None of them, why were they not killed? The reason why they were not killed is because I put to you, and this is what As-Sarakhsi says, the Hanafi jurist, and this is before liberalism was even invented. He wrote this. It's nothing to do with you changing your faith. Islam and Allah is not afraid of you changing your faith. You can change your faith all you like. We don't care because Allah will judge you on the day of judgment. We believe those who change their faith and become apostates. That there will be in the hellfire and burning and all that stuff. We believe in eternal damnation. I mean, that's even worse than that for us. It's an eschatological reality. We, we say that this has nothing to do with you changing your faith. It's all to do, yes, with... The allegiance or non-allegiance to a state. And if your bay'ah or the allegiance is premised on a theological reality, which is, yes. Uh, um, and, you believe, and you believe that the state should be Islamic and everybody should be forced to pledge allegiance to the state, don't you? No, I don't think that is any... Look, if it's a Muslim-majority country, absolutely. If it's a absolutely. Muslim, yeah, if it's a muslim so, so, so what is the difference then? No, 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 you believe that an Islamic state should be established? I think if it's a Muslim-majority country, then there's a democratic impetus... For the even on democratic worldview, for you to say, well, the majority are Muslim. If they want Islam, then surely on democratic principles, uh, uh, outsiders should have nothing to do with that. But so Muslim, everything, you have, everything that you have said was just a complete waste of time because you believe that an Islamic state, because, you because, you be, it, that's why. because you believe that an Islamic, that an Islamic uh, state, an Islamic government should be established if the majority is uh, is Muslim, including yeah, yeah, the Islamic if, you, you, for example, have, you for example want to spread Islam to the entire UK. So if the majority of the entire UK, if the majority of the entire UK was was religion. Muslim, no, you no, would no, want I, everybody I to change to an Islamic state, and this Islamic state should require. I don't want an Islamic state in Britain. I'm not asking for. So in if I, for example, left Islam yeah. in that Islamic state and uh, openly mm-hmm. spoke about it mm-hmm. and openly spoke against this religion, then I would be put to death. And you would. No, I'm not saying you're put to death. I'm not saying you're put to death on the end. Like, you you're it. making it seem like we want to kill you. No one wants to kill you. Like He's playing the victim. No one, no one wants to kill I, you. I am not, you're not afraid hey, of you. You, you cannot. You cannot. You, you cannot. You are a Christian or an atheist. That's your decision. I swear to God, I don't care. I swear. Do you? Do you condemn? Do you condemn? About that. What okay, I'm saying you are you are aware that you are aware that the majority of your of your fellow that you will, for that reason you will be you'll be eternally damned in the hell. You are you are aware that the majority of your fellow fellow Islamic Islamic uh, scholars and apologists agree that, uh, that 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 apostates who make their apostasy open should be put to death, including your friends Al Dawa, including Daniel Hikikic, yeah, well, including many look, others. So you all agree on this. Do you think they are wrong and you condemn them for that? Well, here's my belief. Here's my belief. I believe that what they're saying is they're mentioning a classical opinion in the books of fiqh or jurisprudence. They're saying it should happen. They're not mentioning well, they're opinion. saying it should happen. My view is that if we actually have an Islamic state, and this is what I recommended in my book, it's in print. It's in print. Yeah, I'm saying that if there is an Islamic state, I believe that that Islamic state should have a peace treaty with a non-Islamic state such that apostates, public apostates, uh, don't need to be killed or don't are not killed at all. There's no, no harm done to them and there's strategic re- relocation. And that is not despite the uh, aqwal of the Prophet. It is because of the sayings of the Prophet. And the evidence of that is the fact that the Prophet Muhammad in Hudaybiyah, he actually had a peace treaty to that effect. So is, had... that without expe- is that without exception for all apostates? Yes. All apostates will be... Used you, think, to... you think no apostate should be killed. They should all be relocated to different countries. Absolutely. That's, that, that's my view. I don't think... Oh, I appreciate, that's, I appreciate I that. that. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. I, I think that if you have a, a Muslim a apostate, public apostates, because if you're private, if you're doing things privately, there's no harm on you. But there's considerable harm, as you know, on apost- public apostates who uh, apostate, uh, apostatize in Muslim-majority places. So those individuals should be relocated, in my view, yeah, to other 
non-Muslim countries. And that is not despite what the Prophet said. It's because of what he allowed in the final peace treaty that he concluded with Suhail ibn Amr. And in fact, uh, uh, Ibn Qayyim, in his, in his uh, discussion of this, and other scholars, I'm just mentioning Ibn Qayyim because it comes to mind. He says it's not abrogated. This is an unabrogated law. So if, if, this, if this peace treaty is in place, my view is that actually that should be what happens. Now, I've said so this a few times. I would like to I would like to uh, reiterate this for for the public because I think this is uh, very great news because many other people especially yes, those of, especially yes. many many of those who who oppose Islam would like to hear this in very short sentences. So Mohammed Hijab here uh, agrees that Mohammed Hijab opposes the general ruling of the killing of all of apostates, public and private apostates, well, and he me, and I, he and he agrees that and he agrees that if in an Islamic state in an Islamic country which a majority Muslim country should well, uh, should me, be turned me, into let, let then. Then uh, apostates apostates should not be killed, but they should be forcibly relocated to other countries, which is still by definition genocide. But at least it is not death. So that, that is what you are agreeing. It's not with. Genocide, but this is by it's definition genocide. genocide. It's not genocide. No, no, it's not it genocide. Is it is, it is cultural agree. genocide. It's cultural genocide. No, no, no. What, look, stop trying to use words that are, you don't know what the definitions of it, them it are. Is, it is by definition well, cultural you, genocide. Let me tell you. Can I just articulate it? Can sure. I correct your articulation? Sure. sure. Muhammad Hajab believes. That in an ideal Islamic state in the 21st century, that if there is a Muslim country, Muslim majority country that uh, claims to rule by Islamic law, that such Muslim Islamic country should make a peace treaty or a, a contract with other non-Muslim countries such that if a public apostates become apparent in the public sphere, public, yes, that such public apostates are relocated. And he is basing this on the final hadith of the Prophet Muhammad where he, the Prophet, allowed such a uh, thing to happen with Suhail ibn Amr and, uh, and where the scholars of Islam, and in fact you could even argue the majority of scholars, allow such thing. Muhammad Hijab is not saying it's not conceivable within an Islamic state or it's not understood classically that there was such a thing yeah, in the 1,400 years of Islamic history as public apostasy, uh, sorry, uh, punishments. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that there's a maneuverability within the scope of jurisprudence, Islamic jurisprudence, which allows Muslims to actually make this a kind of contract. And I think that if Muslim majority countries make such contracts, that that will decrease uh, the, the, the ability of the non-Muslim enemy, yes, to be able to attack Islam and its peoples on the pretense of human human rights. And I think Do you think it is not conceivable that there should be such a thing? I don't understand the question. Sorry, could you repeat that? You, you said you, you said you're not saying that it is uh, not conceivable that there was such a thing in the history and in the past. Yeah. The killing of apostates. Do you yeah. also say that it is not conceivable that there should be such a thing in our time or in the future? Do you think it yeah. it, do you think it is uh Wrong, no, I mean, inconceivable, I mean, impossible. I say, I say that Muslim. No, I, I know, I know what you think. I know what you what you suggest. But do you think it is absolutely wrong and inconceivable that apostates, no matter what kind of apostates they are, should right. be should be? I haven't used the word inconceivable because inconceivable means not possible, right? Sorry, I'm just going to put this on plain mode. Um, it means not possible. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying I'm not making a, an argument from conceivability. This is this is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying I'm making a policy recommendation for Muslim majority countries, and I've made. So that it's just a recommendation. No, it's a recommendation based on the actions of the Prophet. That, but that's all it is. So you would yeah, it's still, it's in the end, yeah, it's in, in the end, the actions of the Prophet. Look, look, looking at the Islamic uh, Dawah scene, for example, the consensus is that uh, the right thing to do is to put apostates, public apostates, to I'm death. Not, if, an, if an, you are, but I'm the, not the, that. so therefore that is that is not that is not no that is not part of the that is not part of the point. My point is, a uh, majority of people, for example, come together and think that the appropriate punishment for apostasy, public apostasy, would be death. So if people now come together and establish such a state, and they said this is the ruling that we should apply. Sorry, Mohammed Tijab, your suggestion is very nice, but we cannot do that because we agree to this. Yeah. Do you think that is okay? I've I've had conversations with policy officials in countries like Malaysia. And I've actually had the chance to influence uh, their spokespeople. That was and I've, I've, given, I've, given them, I've given them these kinds of uh, recommendations. Because as you know, Brunei is a country that is nearby. And they look, look at that for, as an example. Because we're talking about maslah and nafsada. Really, we're, we're talking about 
what is in the common interest and what's not in the common interest. And this is something which many people like yourself, uh, and on the other hand as well, Muslims, they don't understand. And I'm trying to trying to educate everyone here that actually Brunei, when they had, when they attempted to put a full fledged uh, hudud laws, what had, what happened to them as a country? They, they were under attack from all spheres, and they're too small to defend themselves. So how how can they um, be a Muslim country? How can they uh, do as much as they can do within the scope of the international, uh, yani the, the, the waqa or the, the international environment, whilst at the same time being faithful to their Islamic position? I'm giving them a very reasonable and practical solution. I'm giving people uh, countries like Brunei. What do you do with what, what would you do with countries like Brunei when you have apostates in Brunei? If they try and kill, imagine trying to kill a public apostate in Brunei. I mean, just think about that for a second. What do you think America would do? I think they would actually, I think they would threaten invasion. I believe that. Of course, of course. Right. Yeah, yeah. For that reason, I, I don't think that it's within anybody's interest. And what I'm saying is that the fiqh, look, this is what I want to, people to understand. Islamic jurisprudence is wide, okay? It's not black and white. It really is not black and white. I'm a traditionalist. You know that I'm a traditionalist. I'm not scared to tell you the most severe view of everything. But what I'm saying is within, look, Ibn Qayyim was Ibn Taymiyyah's student. I mean, Ibn Taymiyyah was the traditionalist, if you like. I'm a traditionalist. I'm telling you that this is fully in line. I want to confirm that what I'm saying is fully in line. But what I want people to understand, this conversation about apostasy now, I think we've done and dusted with it. If this is your strongest argument, it is, Again, not, it, is not, it is not an argument. This is look, because, I, I, look, even because if you opened the topic. We so, asked you to, well, I've, I've given you the floor. You tell me, what, <laughs> yeah. what's your biggest objection against this? So, uh, this in, 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 no, this is not what I presented. We came to this topic because uh, they, kept ask, they kept asking me about tripping up the right, so which was, which is what this response now. was about. That's done. So what is it, your... It, it is, it is, it is, it is not done. It is not done. I have to remark something. So uh, your Go entire... Which we talked about this for 15, 20 minutes. And okay. the and the entire talk was about how uh, relocating people was a recommendation that is that is in line uh, with opinion with traditionalist Muslim opinion yeah. in history. I, but, prophet. Okay, in line with it, but uh, but that this is just one of the options that you would recommend this because you would consider this beneficial. But yeah, this, exactly. this is just right, one yeah. of the. So but problem? this is just one of the one of the options. Whereas, is, so the whereas one of the whereas one of the other options is also that I should be put to death, for example. In well, look, well, no, my, my argument is this. My argument is that classic. No, please, please, let's not trivialize these issues. Stop making yourself the victim because I am not making myself the victim. I am in no danger, Muhammad Tijab. I am in absolutely no danger. I, 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 I can do. I can do. I can do whatever the hell I want. I have no me, danger. Let me give you my reassurance. I'm, I'm not scared at all. I don't think you're a public threat. I don't think you're an intellectual threat. I don't think you're a physical threat. I don't think it makes sense for anybody to try and threaten you physically. I'm I am you. in no danger. This is not about me. This is oh, ridiculous. Fine, so, it's not about me. I'm not saying that we should be killing you. So I, what, what I'm saying now, look, at the end... Well, it's just a recommendation. That's it. So we're, we're done with the topic. I it is a recommendation on your part, and that's it. trying to get a nice headline for Twitter. That's what it was. Okay. What I'm saying to you now, look, Islam, you have to understand, this is a branch, okay? Hudud and penal laws and so on is a branch of Islam. But really, we have to understand what the foundations are. The foundations of Islam is Tawheed. It's the idea of one God worthy of worship, that we believe that the Creator God, right? And the fact that we believe the Prophet is the final messenger. Now, when you come to that conclusion, okay, then things that you might otherwise feel um, are, you know, unworthy or aesthetically unpleasing and so on will start to become more sensical in you, you, you see so you have to start with the roots so we, we can we can we can come to that we can come to that you've given me one question and I've we can come to that just the yeah, opening the opening topic here we're supposed to, we're supposed to start with the roots the, 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 this is where we're are you, to, hey this is respectful no you have not let me speak at all for what? Not, not even not even once we, i haven't said a word for the last like 15 10 <laughs> 20 minutes we let you speak but this is respectful. I'm for your strongest yeah. argument you have no argument right. See, yeah, uh, Adam Saleh and Slim here argued at the beginning that it is absolutely inconceivable and completely wrong to kill people for their beliefs, and this is completely not Islamic. Whereas uh, I don't know if you can follow. I don't. I don't think you have been able to follow yeah, yeah, to follow ten percent of what Mohammed Tijab said. But Mohammed Tijab basically. He, 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 he but Mohammed Tijab basically. But Mohammed. Well, the question was, what is? Well, 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 you've given me one question. I think that's fair. You have just you told me. Now, you have just told me that you always let me speak, and now you, you're, you're trying to get a clickable title of Muhammad Hajab or Adam and Slim. Like, yeah, it's just we're we we talking here. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, we're trying no, to get no, each other. Have a leave, leave the side. Leave the side. Look, the, look, we're giving you off the floor. What we're saying is Islam. Look, you have to understand Islam from the beginning. Islam is a religion. I, I will one. not. I will not argue theology with yeah. you here. 
I won't argue. Well, it's not about arguing. It's we're talking here. It's not an argument. No, I'm, I will not. I will not talk about theology here. Not not right. I made. Oh, a, I made a very. I made a very. I made a very. It is theology. It is basic theology. I made a very clear offer to you. I said, if you want to uh, exchange opinions on on whether well, Islam, exactly. on whether my question here, man, why don't you just let me speak? You just keep saying this. You know. Let's talk. You're right here. I made I made you I made you an offer. If you want to talk about whether Islam is the truth or not, then we can unite and talk talk on a third party not platform now. where none of us you is. Know what you want to say? Jesus yeah, Christ! Right then we can we can talk on a platform where none of us is in charge, where nobody can interrupt each other like this, so no, that I we can so that we can freely talk about uh, why you think Islam is the truth and why I don't think Islam is the truth. Well, there's no and need you, to go through all of that. Look, we, we could. Why? Why not? Why not? That is that is the most that is that is the fairest that is the fairest most professional way to have a debate. Platform. This is a big platform. You're not wanting to have a de- you're not wanting to have a debate with me. The biggest, probably one of the biggest Muslim uh, YouTubers out there. You're you know, refusing to have a fair debate with me right now. There's you're no refusing to have it a- anywhere else. There's no- <laughs> no, seriously. So I mean, this, this is this this is the fourth time that you are refusing to have a debate with me. Uh, no, and I'm making excuses. No, we're refusing. We're still arguing. We're waiting for the debate. We're waiting for him, man. I got my pop. No. I, made, I, made, I made a very clear offer. I will not. Grandstanding, please. Let's just have a, a discussion. This is not. No, I, I am grandstanding because you are being. You are acting. You are acting very scared. I'm sorry. You are scared of the topic. Look, you are. What? You I'm are scared, scared of the topic. No, it's, of course it's, it does. I'm scared. It doesn't make Islam false. No, it, it doesn't make Islam false. Of course it doesn't. I'm but scared. it will prove a point to the public. Yeah. I'll tell you the truth. I don't think I'm scared. <laughs> I you know. I, 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 I think you are. Scared. I think you are. What? I think you are. Okay, and I think you're scared. I don't I think I'm scared. It doesn't matter because that's I know. We're having a fight. The scared one hasn't said his argument though. You didn't say your argument. Engagement. You're yeah. not scared. It, it, it does. It doesn't make. It doesn't make Islam false. But that is the entire point. We should be able to come together and properly have a fair debate on whether Islam is the truth or not. It's. It's not about we're discussion now. We're having a discussion now. So all I'm saying is, look, I'll. I'll be very straightforward with you. There's four things I would say about Islam being the truth. I'm not even going to go through. Maybe three things. Yeah, for the sake of argument. We we say number one the argument from God Tawhid we say that there's only one God. Hey, I, you no, know no, what this is? No, no. I'll put it to you. I'll put it to you now. There, there will be people. There will be people. People watching this stream because I am here who will normally not watch this stream. What is happening here is that by not letting me speak and only you speak, you will clearly make it look like you are making a big point that I cannot make a point look, because, not, not, because, because you not because you do not because you do not let me respond. So you cannot you, you cannot use it. You cannot trick me into a conversation and then use this as an opportunity to propagate your ideas. I'm, look, leave the I'm, hate out, brother. Leave the hate out at your heart. Take the hate no. out at your heart. I deliberately said. I deliberately no, said we I should have a fair, fair debate about things. I want to hear what you guys say. I want to hear what you have to say. What I'm saying is this: Islam makes a case for itself. Okay, it makes a case for itself. We say that there's only one God worthy of worship. That all conceptions of God, other than the Islamic ones, if you look at the six major world religions, are actually incompatible with logic and incompatible with the predisposition. Number one. Number two, we say that look, the Quran itself has falsification challenges. It it actually says if there's any if you if you believe that this book is from other than God, then please try and find it. Oh, you would have found it many contradictions. I have so shown many of them. Challenge there to try and find contradictions in the Quran. I have falsified the Quran yeah, on, on very high levels. No, that's fine. The inimitability no. challenge is to try and produce something like the Quran, which means that it has to go within the scope of. It has to do exactly what the Quran has done, which includes, by the way, telling the future because the Quran speaks explicitly about a f- future events like chapter 30 verses 1 to 6 and it is wrong and, about and yes in many other places of the quran like chapter 24 verses 55 and onwards so, it, so yes it is wrong about that explicitly about future events and it does so accurately even according to western philosophers and sorry what about the six scientific mistakes now, of the quran what i'm saying to you is if number one you said that you found contradictions in it so my my challenge to you now is to try and find a do you, do you think do you think the stars do you think the stars are missiles thrown at devils for example well, chapter 67, verses 1 to 5, um, you know, where it says, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَ وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ First of all, it says, you know, this, if this is your strongest argument, let me answer it. No, it's not. Well, I, w- I will not make my strongest argument. I'm, 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 throwing, I'm, throwing rock, I'm, throwing, I'm throwing rocks at you. I want you to answer this. Okay, Since we're not abiding by rules, go ahead. So the Quran says in chapter 60, I think verse 3 or 4, 
a uh, 67 sorry five six, six, 65 i believe yeah 67 five. Well, mm-hmm. five. we have certainly adorned the the heavenly realm with uh, with stars and we have made it a pelting thing for the devils now what is uh, first of all masabih so there's a difference of opinion some they say it's meteorite some they say it's stars and says rujum and shayat, and we have made it as a pelting things for the for the devils. So it's saying that devils, because if you look at chapter thirty seven of the Quran and other parts in the very first um, five chapters uh, verses, sorry, you'll find that the sama dunya or the the heavenly realm is adorned with stars, with has many functionalities of them to try and find your way, as the Quran says, of them so it can go around in orbits, as the Quran says. Uh, and by the way, the Quran says in chapter 25 that there are many suns because it says, um, Tabarak al ja'ala fi samai burujan. No, it does not. Pardon? What does it say that? Yeah, it says in chapter 25, Tabarak al ja'ala fi samai burujan wa ja'ala fiha surujan munira. There's two karaat. One karaat says sirajan munira and surujan munira. So, what, 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 what chapter, what verse? Uh, I, I can't remember the verse here, but this you, you can just check it out. Chapter 25, chapter 25. That is most definitely untrue. Well, I've just quoted it in the Arabic. So you can. Check. Why is it most definitely untrue? I mean, <laughs> I've just told you in the Arabic. Because I don't know the verse number. I'm sorry, I don't know the verse numbers. I haven't memorized the verse numbers. I've memorized the Arabic. So, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ فِي السَّمَاءِ بُرُوجًا وَجَعَلَ فِيهَا um, uh, there's two qira'as One of them is Siraj and Munira And there's another one Suraj and Munira the Siraj and Munira means a, a, a shining lamp And Suraj and Munira means many stars So a shining lamp means a star And uh, sorry, ma- many suns uh, One sun and many suns So in other words, the Quran says that there are many suns The cosmic picture of the Quran Therefore, is that there are many suns Many solar systems Because suns are accompanied with solar systems And that they have many functionalities Of them there is a metaphysical thing which we can't see, which is that the Quran, that the um, the stars or the celestial spheres, they actually pelt the devils or the, or the jinn, because we believe in this uh, the, the, this creation called the jinn. We haven't created the jinn and the human being except that you worship. It. So the, the, these celestial bodies actually pelt them. What's the, how can you falsify that? I don't see the issue. But well, the you, have, you have failed. You have failed to give me you have... something which is seen as the cosmological picture of the Quran. Is not something which I would say is out of line with 21st century uh, understandings. You have not you have not given me any uh, any, any any proof. It, it is a very big claim to claim that uh, that, that the Quran actually describes uh, many suns or many stars. Uh, you said it in, in chapter five. Oh, okay. You just said it. Don't you check? Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't give me give me any uh, proof. proof of it. Uh, I'll get it now. Sorry, let me just get a few now. Just... But you remember in the English they want there's two qiraas, yeah. Tabarak Alladhi Jala. Okay, good. This is verse. He just said it. I don't know. You gotta look for it, but verse 61, chapter 25, verse 61. So there's two qiraas. There's one qira'a was the uh, glory be to the one who has made in the star uh, sky stars, yeah, and has made in it many suns. One Yani sun, you know a sun? Like the sun and the moon. So made many suns. And the Quran, you know, here's my understanding of the Quran, the cosmology. You can this, interpret... This is, this, is an outrageous, this is an outrageous claim. Every taf- tafsir that I'm looking at, and including the, the modern and old translations, tell us that there are uh, many constellations or stars in the sky and that there is also a lamp. A lamp... What Tabari says here, look. A lamp and an illuminating moon, which refers to the sun and the moon. This is, yeah, no, no, ridic- this is a ridiculous claim. It says it here. Look, I can read it to you if you want. It says... Um, uh, this is a Tabari Tafsir Burujan Wajala Fiha Sirajan. Yeah, Echtalaf al Kura fi Kira at Delik, the Kara at Kara at Amat Kura al Medina, Wal Basra, Wajala Fiha Sirajan. So there's one way of saying it, which is Sirajan, Allah at Tawheed. So th- that means one son. This is what Tabari is saying. Uh, and the other one say, uh, Surujan. Yeah, Wukaman Munir, which means many sons. That's what Tabari says. But you can't access Tabari because it's in Arabic, so it's not in English. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, the, but, the, is, the, the point I'm making is that the cosmological picture in, in the Quran is one which can be in line with seventh century Arabian uh, uh, unscientific, if you're going to call it the unscientific understanding. But it can yeah. actually also be, and this is one of the arguments, another argument, it can actually also be in line with 21st century understandings of science. So it cannot example, be. Pardon? 
It cannot so, be the, the general the, the general understanding of this of this Quran verse, for example, uh, even according to the to, to the to the tafsir, to the, the most renowned tafsir, which is Ibn Kathir, and all the translations that we have clearly says that this is speaking about uh, con uh, constellations, and it has and there is a lamp and an illuminous light, right. which but, which in other parts of the Quran is is, is repeated is in English is the problem is repeated numerous times. It refers to the sun and the moon. The lamp yeah, yeah, is the sun, yeah, whereas the illuminous moon is the two ways of reading it. One of them is like that. You're right. So this is an, no, but there's another way of reading it, which is Surogen. So both of them are acceptable, and Tabari says that. So it, the cosmological picture, once again, the cosmological picture in the Quran, and this is one of the arguments for Islam being true, because let me give you an example, right? You know, the Quran says, Chapter 35, uh, 9, verse 5, where it says that he, 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 he makes the, you know, he talks about the, the sun, the moon, and that, uh, you kawir. You, the kawir, you kawir here means that he rolls the night into the day and he rolls the night into the, the, night into the, the day into the night. Ibn Hazm, and by the way, the Salaf, because there's a guy called Ibn Munada, Munada who, uh, who's uh, of the Tabari, he says this shows that the earth is round. Okay, this shows that the earth is round because takwir is when you wrap the night and the day around each other. Now, one easy argument I can make is the Quran, according to the Salaf, the, 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 the early generation, the companions and those who came after them, According to those people, and Ibn Taymiyyah actually has a sanad, which is a mutasil, ila Ibn Munada, believe that the earth is round. Now, there are some people who, who say that the earth is flat. There are some scholars who say that. But mm -hmm. there, are, there are the salaf, there are some scholars from the, uh, the early generations who say that the earth is round. Whereas there, if you are, there, the, but there, are, there are many among them who say that it is flat. Why are we yeah, doing this selectively? Yeah, there's two interpretations. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Why, why, why are we doing this selectively? So I, 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 I agree with you on that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I do. I do not point out that that this is that, that that Muslims all agreed that the earth was flat and that this is what we should therefore agree yeah, on. That no, this no, is the here's, here's the argument. The argument is that you're right. That there are some Muslim scholars in the past who have said the earth is flat, but there are some who use the Quran to show that the earth is round. Now, well, but the opposite the also I'm, used the Quran to say that the earth is flat. The others also used the Quran to say that it's flat. From the early generations. Well, there was also the Salaf. Mm. Like who? I I, I I I cannot memorize uh, names, but I, I would I would have, I, I would have been right. examples of that. that here, but I don't think there's anyone from the Salaf that says that the Earth is flat. Okay, but I'm I've, pretty sure. I, I, I can I can look into it and demonstrate yeah, because, it later. Because according to Ibn Taymiyyah, actually Ibn Taymiyyah has a has a fatwa on this in Kitab al-Arsh in his Majmu'at al-Fatawa, and he says in it that there's ijma, there's a consensus among the scholars that the Earth is round. And Which many who did you say? Like Ibn Hazm says that Ibn Munada says that. Many, you said you said Ibn Taymiyyah. Yes, Ibn Taymiyyah. But he lived in a time where it was pretty clear the earth was uh, was was round. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think we can I mean, base it on The Greeks that. knew that the earth was round. The Greeks knew it. I mean, I'm not trying to make an argument from that. Ibn Taymiyyah was uh, 8th century or whatever, 728 uh, AH. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the Greeks knew it. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, look, if you look at the Bible, the Old Testament corpus, there's there's never been a patristic scholar, for example, an, uh, an early church father, who has said the earth is round because of what's written in the Bible. They mm -hmm. always write, they always refer to um, the Greeks, like Aristotelian logic, whereas in the whereas the um, the commentary, the exegetical commentary in the Quran, allows there to be an interpretation which says that the Earth is round, yes, and uh, 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 that comes from the Quran rather than from Greek sources. But the point is I'm making is that the Quran is compatible with seventh century understandings of cosmology, but it's also compatible with twenty first century uh, understanding, of cosmology. and both of them you can find exegetical precedent for that. So, for example, when you're looking at many suns, many constellations, that the earth is round, you can find commentaries that go all the way back to the Salaf. You can find the commentaries that talk about the expanding universe all the way back to the Salaf. All of these but, are afforded from the patristic sources about the Old Testament, for example. So well, that's uh, yeah. Look, look at this. Look at this. Old Testament with patristic sources. Yeah. Look at this. We, we have... We have uh, Many Quran verses. I, I in fact made a made a compilation of this. Many Quran verses, which would on a plain reading indicate that the, that the Earth is flat, that the sun travels over the Earth, that the, that the moon follows the Earth. The Quran even explicitly, literally says that the moon follows the Earth, for example. Yeah, you, you and uh, if if you if you read these on a plain reading, uh, if you read the entire Quran on a plain reading, and you don't have any idea about the universe, about what actually what things actually look like, you would clearly understand that the, that our world is a 
a, 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 a flat, a plain I place, which, which yeah. above yeah. which there above which there is there is a ceiling which yeah, could yeah. crack, which is being held up by things. Yeah. But yeah. you know, it could be very easy, for example, for the Quran to give us revolutionary information and to say and to talk about space, which is not mentioned in the Quran. Talk about yeah. the galaxies, which is not mentioned. Talk about different no, uh, planetary the systems, yeah, planets, not... or the universe, for example. Yeah, yeah, These I'm are right. things that we found out only within the last few centuries. I understand, but what what I'm, the argument I'm making is not that the Quran says things scientifically which were not known at the time and so on and so forth. I, I actually say that there are many things about the Quran that were known before in Greek times and so on. My argument is, sorry, I'm just, uh, my argument is in fact this. My argument is that the Quran is compatible with 7th century understandings of science or cosmology, but it also has the unique multi-dimensional compatibility with 21st understanding. And that's not despite an eisegesis, it's because of an exegesis. So what I'm saying to you is this, is that this, if you look at the Bible, if you look at the Bible, for example, there's nothing to indicate that the earth is round in the Bible from the, from the clear verses. You could say, if you wanted to, if you wanted to say that the earth is, um, uh, that there are scholars, there were people from the Salaf, from the early generations, before, way before uh, telescopes were invented in Islam that said that the earth was round. And they did that despite the cosmological evidences. They used chapters of the Quran, like Ibn Hazm, actually used in his Kitab Fisal, he used chapter 39 verse 5 as a reason to, to, to suggest that the earth was round. Now that's unique to the Quran, that it has the capacity to align itself cosmologically with a 7th century understanding and with a 21st century understanding. You see, so this is an argument I'm making that not, oh, it didn't know things from this, not a Zakir Naik argument. I'm making an argument of uh, the fact that the Quran, the cosmology of the Quran is a cosmology which is compatible not only with the 7th century, but can be compatible with 21st. I'm not saying that there's no way. Yes, sorry, these people keep calling me. I, I really don't know why they keep calling Yanni uh, like that. Sorry, I'm just not. Sorry. Yeah, but what I'm saying, so you understand the point here. So, uh, so these are arguments. Prophecies are something else. Like the Prophet Muhammad, we say, he made explicit prophecies about the future. He told us in, in many hadiths where Islam will spread. He told us Islam will spread to Egypt. He told us Islam will spread to India. He told us Islam will spread to a Sindhu al-Hind, India and what's now Pakistan. He told us it will spread to your country in Turkey, that the, the Arabs will fight the Turks. He told us that uh, uh, count six things between the hour. One of them is Moti. That Jerusalem was going to, Islam is going to enter Jerusalem, which is a place which is the crown jewel of the Roman Empire. Islam predicted the demise of the Roman Empire. Islam predicted the demise of the Persian Empire. Islam predicted the, 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 the construction of very tall buildings. Islam predicted the, the advent of sexually transmitted diseases like AIDS no. and gonorrhea and so on. Islam predict, makes predictions that I would argue, and this is a challenge, that there's no religion on the face of the earth that has been able to do, make so many challenges about the future, so many predictions about the future, and be so accurate in all of those predictions. So what I'm saying I is would, that... I would, I would strongly contest, contest that. I would strongly contest that. I would, I would have to... I would, I, would, I, would like to I would like to uh, first off respond to the to the science point. Um, yes. You, you are, of course, arguing that the Quran is, is, is not only compatible with its time when it comes to science, but also compatible with, compatible with modern times, like today when it comes to science. I would yeah. uh, definitely disagree with that and say no, that... No, it no, is no, can I go correct that articulation? I'm not saying that Islam has to be completely congruent with 21st century science, but I'm saying the co what I said is the cosmology of Islam, uh, or, or the, the depicted cosmology in the Quran, okay. is uh, something which can be harmonized with 21st understandings of Islam. Okay. Now, there are things, it's, it's conceivable that Islam can uh, sometimes go against science because science is not an enterprise which is perfect. As you know, it's, it's not an incorrigible enterprise. Sometimes it will change, and we know that. There are many things which change in science. It's called paradigm shift. Thomas. Oh, uh, okay, L let me get back to the point then. I would, I would definitely say that the Quran can uh, not be seen as compatible with, uh, to, with, with the modern understanding of science because there are many examples to that uh, where the Quran, for example, describes that mountains were put into the earth, that Allah made the earth a bed, that, the, that, the, that Allah is holding up the sky, that Allah sends rain from the sky, that Allah sends thunders from the sky, and so many so, more. Why is so, sending rain from the sky uh, against? So many, so many, so many more more, more examples uh yeah. th th that is that is only the, the scientific part you could argue forever i have made a huge uh, collection yeah, I understand, but, but can i just can i, can I but, comment uh, on no no you you moved on to you moved on to prophecies no, I will before, say, uh, before you get to prophecies because you did mention a few points I think it's, 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 
No, yeah. I, you ended you ended the talk of, of scientific. Just, stuff. just on the, just, the, to to, just on the point like on, the, on, the, on those right. examples you gave. So, so you see the examples that you gave on, like for example, Mahd. The Quran refers to you said, "Alam najal al You know, so and so on. Chapter seventy-eight, verses one to four. You know, it's, it refers to the the the, the earth as a Mahd, which is basically the Arabic word for meh, uh, bed. Yeah, you, a resting place. As a as a now, but now the question is. Can the Quran, can it be interpreted? Can someone pluck out verses and make it interpreted to fit a flat earth model? I'm not saying no. But what I'm saying is that we have had early interpretations using the Quran, despite the cosmology, that agreed that the earth is round. And in fact, there's more vigor in that direction. So in other words, more people like, as I've just said to you, Ibn Munad from the Salaf. He's caught by Ibn Taymiyyah in his Kitab al-Arsh and Ibn Majmu'at al-Fatawa. And look at uh, Ibn Hazm. He was 400, 400 years after the Prophet. He was saying, based on chapter 35, 39, verse 5, that the earth is round. So the, the idea, once again, that the, the mehd, that the earth is a mehd, a bed, is not something really which is understood to indicate the shape of the earth. Because a resting place, a bed, it can be a cradle, can be something which you basically put in, in any kind of shape. Like, you know, you cradle a baby in this way and so on. And if it was so clear, and, and this is the point, if it was so clear, someone who is a strict scripturalist, like a traditionalist like Ibn Taymiyyah and the Salaf, they would not be saying that the earth is definitely round. I, I, would, I, don't, I don't think that they have any authority over deciding what the Quran uh, actually says because they lived in a time in which it was only, the only reasonable thing to agree that the earth is actually round. No, but when you, but when you, from the Prophet because Ibn Munad. But when you look at this, but when you look at this Quran verse, yeah. for example, like chapter two, verse twenty-two, uh, yeah. it is He who made for you the earth a bed and a, yeah. and the sky a ceiling. Look, look at this. I'm talking about the context. I'm not talking about this, just describing the earth as a bed. You could imply that it could mean something else. He made for you the earth a bed. Uh, and the sky is ceiling, and sent down from the sky rain, and, and brought forth right thereby now, fruits as provision right. for you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, do yeah. not attribute whatever to him. It further says in uh, in, in following verses that Allah yeah. also put uh, mountains into the earth. So yeah, yeah. So he imagine this. The earth. So what's so the problem? Rain, rain, is, rain is not something that comes uh, from the sky. The sky is not something solid. The sky does what's not the exist. Sky? What's the, your... the, the sky is only an appearance, only something that we have that we see no, as an the object. Sky in the Arabic language, sorry, can I just correct you on something here? Sure. The sky in the Arab, as sama, if you look at Arab, in the Arabic language, according to Ibn, uh, to actually all of the Khawamis that have consulted. It's a barrier, people. according to the Quran. Pardon? It's a barrier, according to the Quran. And the no, 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 it's not. It's not. According it's to, according, a let me explain. I'll give you the reason. I'll give you the references. According to Lisan Arab, which is one of the authoritative um, Khawamis dictionaries of the Arabs. The sky, whenever the word sama is used, it just means that which is above. Okay, that which is above. Now, the verse that you've mentioned, chapter two, verse twenty-two, "Who alladhi jala al-adha firashan wa sama bina an wa anzal min al-sama ima an fa akhraj bihi min al-thamarat yizqan lakum fa la tajalu lillahi an dadan wa antum la taalamun." Yeah, this verse. Okay. Actually, what the, the word firash here, once again, it just means an expanse. And once many people have explained this, the word Ard, and this is the problem, the word Ard has more than one meaning. The word Ard, which means here the earth, has the meaning of the earth, the planet earth, but it also has the meaning of the land. It has that which is below, just like Sama is that which is above, Ard, which means that which is below. So you, you, you could endlessly explain how, what, what this could also mean. No, no, no. But I, I, would, I would like to, I yeah, would like to give the average... In chapter 39, verse 5. I would, but, I would like to give the, the average Muslim viewer just, just one thing. Uh, close your... Uh, but so close your eyes. Think, think about it. Uncharitable. No, they, think, think about it. What you need to think, do, think, think about a scenario where you do not know uh, what the earth and the universe looks like. Think about it. You are, you, are, you are in a place and you don't know what anything looks like. You don't know anything about modern science. Yeah. You open this, this Quran. This is the first thing that you read. And you just read it. And you only read the description uh, of the earth in the book. What will you think? The oh. only... The oh. only the only conclusion that you can come to is that the earth is a, is a flat bed that has a ceiling on it, which cannot be cracked. That, that, that so thought experiment has actually been done. Okay, like I'm telling you again, the thought experiment has actually been done because Ibn Munada is a tabai. Okay, which means the Prophet said, qarni yalunahum, yalunahum. The best generation is my generation, then the ones who follow them, and then the ones who follow them. So there's three generations, golden, they're called the golden generations. Ibn Munada is actually a part of the golden generations, meaning Ibn Munada is a salaf. He is part of the golden generation. He is looking at the Quran. He's not, he doesn't have a telescope. He doesn't have any of these tools that you're talking about. And he says, according to, we have a sanad that is sahih, a complete sanad which is sahih. He says the earth is round. So it's, it's not fair for you to say this is what's going to happen. I've got the evidence to the contrary. Someone who lived 1,300 years ago looking at the Quran because he's looking. Do you know what he looks at? 
The verses that Ibn Hazm mentions, chapter 39, verse 5, because yukawwiru comes from the Arabic word kura. Kura means ball. When it says yukawwiru layla ala nahar, we call it nahar, we call it qadam. You know, you guys are Yemeni as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, qadam, qadam, qadam. Football, football. So when, when, when Ibn Hazm, who is a literalist to the highest degree, he says that the earth is round because it says yukawwiru, Right, that the earth is round, and this actually was your strongest argument, I think, in one of no, your it videos. was not. It was not. So, so what we're doing here, right. what we're doing here, is that is that. Uh, As a, did you put what, that argument in one of your videos? Number no, one, no, the no. Earth is flat, according to the Quran, I, I, I made a video on that. I made a video on, no, on, on many, on many things. One reason why you think Islam is wrong because uh, no, absolutely, no, the earth is absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Wow. So you did. You know, this, is, this is this is not my this is what? not my number one reason. So what is it's your number one reason? My number well, reason, there, are, there are many number one reasons, but what, what, we, what we're doing here is that for 1,000 years, uh, the Muslim world had no idea of, of, the, of the universe, the galaxies, the planetary systems, the sky, and anything. We have gone through many Islamic scholarly uh, you know, ideas and many ideas that the earth is the center of everything, that the sun yeah, goes somewhere at night. Even, even according to a, to a hadith, Muhammad says that the sun, uh, at night, the sun goes to a resting place and it goes under the throne of of Allah and prostrates under the throne of Allah and asks yeah, for permission Hadith to rise again and, to Allah. rise again in the morning and then it's it's given permission yeah. to rise in the morning and right. it comes back and rises and yeah. one day it will not be given permission so it will go back and rise in the uh, yeah. in, in the in the west which is inconceivable the sun doesn't well, go I, anywhere the sun I, is just here at the at the center of a planetary so system and we just revolve around it. no 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 I'm talking about well, this well, uh, me, so so the, so the Muslim world. The Muslim world and the Muslim scholars had no idea how things uh, look like. We have now recently understood how things actually look. And now we are selectively going back and choosing specific no, no, no. Islamic scholars no, and trusting I, I their ideas. The, the point here is what I'm giving you is evidence from the early generations. So you can't say... We, we're... we cannot We cannot just take evidence, uh, you know... What do we do? We cannot take... We cannot take, 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 take... What do we do? Let me speak. This this is why context is important. Uh, we cannot we cannot take selective uh, scholars and their opinions at face value as single evidence that what you have said, for example, is entirely true. I, we, we could take we could take many uh, sources. I have taken many uh, many sources. Much piece of evidence from early scholars who have argued that the earth is definitely uh, flat, who have argued yeah, that the, yeah, know, that the earth is definitely the center of the universe. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Well, so we well, cannot I'm argue. What I'm saying is that, look, the Quran says in chapter 3, verse 7, right? منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخر متشابهات فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ في التبعون ما تشابه منه بالدغاء الفتنة وبالدغاء تأويله There are some of the book, some of the book has muhkam verses which are very clear cut and other ones which are ambiguous meaning the ones which are slightly ambiguous which can have more than one interpretation you can't say this like I, I will say to you just as I say to some Muslim apologists some Muslim apologists say the Quran definitely says X, Y, Z. It says this. It says the expanding universe, the Big Bang. I'm saying, look, we can't be so sure to say that the Quran says that for sure. But at the same time, we can't say so sure, surely, the Quran says the earth is flat. I'm saying, if you want to have a scholarly opinion, you have to allow for both interpretations to be allowed. What I'm saying is that we have evidence from the early generations that allow this interpretation. And we have evidence from the early generations which allow that interpretation. So those both interpretations are valid. We can't sure. now find something which is uh, no, of course, into something which is uh, narrow because no, of course, I, I'm just, I'm just arguing Islamic agenda. Some people have a pro-Islamic agenda. No, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah. You think no. that you think the Quran is 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 is, is uh, you know that, that it can be combined with today's scientific knowledge of the world? No, I, I I I'm, disagree. I I'm disagree with that. that. We have wait. My my point is that it can't be combined. All I'm saying is this: sometimes the Quran will. Not combined with with with. I, I understand. We have different opinions. It is fine. I'm not I'm saying this, so long as the, so long as Islam allows so long as Islam allows for a multiplicity of interpretations within the scope of uh, exegesis. You can't say this is definitely what it means. Just like I would say to someone sure, sure. who's on the other side, you know that the Earth definitely sorry the universe is definitely Big Bang because it says in chapter twenty one verse thirty. That uh, can it one piece and then we cleft them asunder. That is a huge misinterpretation of what yeah, I'm not is. saying that it means the Big Bang. I'm saying that you can't say for sure that's the Big Bang. In fact, saying for sure is the Big Bang is problematic because then you're there's like four interpretations according to a tabari, and you're you're taking one of them and pressing it forward. What I'm saying is that allow the scope because when the cosmologists tomorrow change their opinion on what the universe cons constitutes of. Then we're going to go back to square one and try and re reinterpret the Quran again. Therefore, all I'm saying is that the Quran, by and large, I'm not even saying fully, 
by and large, is harmonious with 21st cosmological understandings if you accept one of many opinions. It's, I'm not saying that it's, it's definitely in all cases. I'm saying that, yeah, you can interpret the Quran, if you like, in an unscientific way, you see, you, in the ways that you have. But I'm, I'm, what I refuse to accept is that that's the only way to interpret the Quran. And you can't say that it is because I've given you evidence to the contrary. So you now, what I think. Yeah, so yeah, now the challenge is as follows. The challenge is, as we said, we started off by saying the Quran has, it claims to be a preserved book. And I'm willing to defend that position. We talked about the prophecies. We talked about the fact that the Quran is multidimensional in its uh, understanding of nature. We talked about the fact that there's no contradiction in the Quran. So the challenge now is for you as a, a, one of the leading anti-Muslim uh, uh, polemics is Thank to you. provide contradictions within the Quran, okay, which are very clear and unresolvable from a logical perspective. Or otherwise, to show that there has been a prophecy that was made by the Prophet of Islam or the Quran that in fact did not materialize. That the Prophet or Islam said this will happen and the opposite thing happened, for example. That's, these are falsifiers. These things have divine, uh, sorry, uh, religiously disproving implications. You have, to prove, you have to provide evidence, something that shows that this religion is wrong. Right now, all you've shown is... I, I, would, I, would definitely, I would definitely appreciate all it if you also... Your understanding of the scope of interpretation in Islamic um, exegesis. And <laughs> <laughs> so we have just agreed that we can have different opinions on these things because you can interpre interpret things differently, but you have... And I have even accepted that your opinion and your interpretation may be true, but you have directly ruled that my uh, opinion and my interpretation is definitely wrong and that it is just... No, I I I interpretation can thing. be true as well in terms of the unscientific but stuff. You, you just you just said it was wrong. No, no, no. What I said was, if you want to say that the earth is flat, you're not going to be a disbeliever in Islam. Because okay. not, if you say the earth, if you want to be a flat earthist Muslim, it's not a point of Qatai, you're a disbeliever. That's my view. But okay, I, I, th I think the Quran says the earth is flat. Yeah, fine. If you okay. think that, that's fine. That's, that's <laughs> absolutely fine. But you can't say that that's exactly what everyone... No, thought. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not, I'm not saying it, that. I'm not saying that. The early authorities, the early authority before the cosmological age, before the scientific revolution, before the Copernican revolution, before all of that, all of the positions that we have in science on a cosmological level now can be represented. I'm telling that's you this. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, can be represented I agree with that. In early Islam. Okay, that's good. I agree with that. I understand that. That's, 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 that's fantastic. It's fantastic. I, I find it fantastic that you have agreed that, that this is also a valid opinion. So, uh, so let's prove the Quran. So now, what are you going to do now? No, I, I, I would, I would, I would appreciate it if you also refer to me as, as one of the as one of the uh, biggest Islamophobes. I would uh, really appreciate that because you have recently given the title to I other say people. Islamophobe. I said uh, leading polemics online. That's that's actually very good. I appreciate that. I, I, it flatters me very I much. Mean, but uh, you, you know what? You, you know what? Uh, I, I I actually appreciate this very much, uh, Muhammad Hijab. I think uh, this has been a very fruitful and productive conversation so far, and I think this is this is fantastic. We could, we could we could we could have we could have done this. I mean, you, you have allowed me to give you some uh, to give you some information, to give you some knowledge on the Quran, to uh, to to further your knowledge and your understanding of, of Islam, and to give you some education on this topic. And uh, I would I would think I think I would appreciate. Uh, actually, considering that we are uh, able to have such a conversation, such a back and forth in such a calm and good way, that we could come together and have an actual debate. So, which, which is what I actually offered to you. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think about having a debate? I, I, I regard debates as a beautiful thing. I have debates on a weekly basis. I used to go to a speaker's corner all the time. I've had seven formal debates. You know, usually, to be honest with you, I've now reserved my debating for someone who is qualified in the, in the, in the, in the, in the subject matter. Unfortunately, you don't meet the criteria, but I did make an exception for you. Have, have, haven't you told me that you would debate me in person? But it has to be, I don't believe that you're the A-side. I believe that. We have more to offer you than you have to offer us. We have more. I don't, I don't. That's true. 100%. That is true. I don't claim that. Look, at the end of the day, if I wanted to fight Nganu in, in UFC, yeah, and I'm saying you're a coward, Nganu, you're a coward. How is he a coward? Or uh, Stipe Miocic. I want to fight you, the heavyweight champion of UFC. I want to fight you. are a coward if you don't. He's not a coward. He's proven his worth. He's got the well, that's, that's a completely different, different area. That's I, not how you're, 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 you're coming to me. You're coming to me. I'm the A side. I've got the I've got the gold. I've got the I've got the qualification. Well, I per I personally think you're terrible in your understanding of Islam. But... I've memorized the Quran. You get it. I've done the. No, it, do, it doesn't it doesn't matter. I know people who. Uh, I've I, I know people who have memorized the Quran. I've done what you haven't done. I have. You have to allow me. You have to allow me. And by the way, when I say I memorized the Quran, it's still weak and stuff, and there's still bits I have to recite to the Sheikh. So I have to be clear here. But still, having said that here, what I'm saying is. I have done the training. Do you get it? I, I've been through 10 years of extensive training. So I've, 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 
what, again, you, and I, again, I'm offering a debate and food and you know doing your thing and enjoying your time and whatever atheists do, yeah, and and watching TV and Netflix. I've had to memorize stuff. I've had to read books. I've, I was I was in a dark room reading stuff. I've had to uh, read. I, mean, I I can brag about about my I can brag about my knowledge here too. It's not fair. It's not fair that you're calling me the guy that has to come to you groveling. You're the guy not, that you're not. You're not coming to me. We are doing something what? modern. I know, but uh, so you asked all the time. Come to London at any time. Come. We'll pay for your ticket. No problem. No. Yeah, did, we are. We are doing a modern debate. I like. If you want a debate, a formal debate, I don't like online debates. You get it. I'm a big character. Why? character. Why? Like you on the stage. Why, why don't you like online debates? I don't like it, man. Because for me, when it comes to debates, I like to actually get involved with the, the, the actions. You get it. I like to. To, to body language is a big thing. Right to now, impress I, the audience. That is exactly why I don't ever want to have a personal debate with you because I want to focus on the that. knowledge. It is, I want I to focus on the knowledge. To engage the audience. I like to keep it. It's three hours. I, you know, for me, my channel, my YouTube channel is a film channel. I don't even know why, but do you know, I realize why. It's because I engage people. If I speak in a monotone way and the way we're doing it online, people are not monotone. Engaged. I will so not be monotone. In a debate, like the, the David Wood debate that I've done that's gone 2 million views and people watch it to the end, man. Three people, hours. This, one, this will get one million, this will get one million views. Like, I'm, I'm, when I'm on stage with the David Wood, I'm engaging. This is me. I'm putting my soul into it, my passion into it, my body language into it. Like, if we have a debate, it will, it will have one million views. If I want a debate, I have to put everything into it. Do you get it? Like I, so what I I'm understand. saying, come down to London. We come down no. to the debate. I'm not, no. I'm never going to, I'll never come down for any no. Islamophobe on the face of the earth. Let me tell you this. I'll make it clear. Any Islamophobe challenges me in any way, any Islamophobe, and I'm not going to retract this. It challenges me in any way, unless I'm physically injured or incapable. Yeah. If they challenge me conversationally, physically in the ring, in the in the in the, on the stage, I'm there. I get knocked out, I'm there. <laughs> if if Ngannou, if Francis on Ghanu, if Francis in Ghanu tomorrow decided to be, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, you have you have you have told me that I shouldn't be trusting you. You told me that I shouldn't trust you. Why should I trust you? Why should I come down to you and say Look, you you? You well, told me that I don't, you, care. I don't care. I feel a lot. I shouldn't trust I, you. I, don't, I, don't, I look forward to death. I actually look forward to it. If it wasn't for my mom and my sister, my, my family and so on, I have to look forward Didn't to it. Didn't you tell I me that I shouldn't trust I you? Died. You get it? It's, 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 it's a way out of this <laughs> uh, testing life. I'd love to be. Well, this, this doesn't make it easier. No, I, I'm looking forward to death. I don't care about these things. I, I don't, well, the, 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 saying that doesn't make it easier. I don't care about death. Do you get it? Well, I'm a Muslim. I'm a Muslim, brother. Do I don't it? care either. I, I, I am a Muslim. So, I, so I believe in a hereafter. I believe in a day of judgment. Okay. Okay. I believe in hellfire. I believe in heaven. I actually believe in those things, brother. Preach. I, I don't. Preach it. Turn I think it's pretty ridiculous. People are going to live in the hellfire and crackle in there. And I believe that there's some people that are going to be <laughs> in heaven and they're going to live there. And you, you know, will live an eternal life. For, you will live an eternal life without any purpose and nothing. You will, live an etern you will live an eternal life doing nothing at all. Purposeless, purposeless life in eternity, and, and, and millions of years on Earth was completely for was completely empty for nothing. Everything that we have done on the Earth, everything that we have done in history, everything that we have built, all the civilizations, all the knowledge will all be gone. It will be all for nothing, and all the only thing there is that is that we will is that we will die and go to heaven and live without purpose forever, and just have our entertainment. What evidence? Well, yeah, exactly. What evidence? Look, what well, evidence? I'm you with his evidence. I'm showing you that the what book evidence? is authoritative. I'm, I'm telling it, you that, look, the Quran... We, we, should, we should debate that. ...comes from Allah. How do we prove it? <laughs> we show that, look, the Quran is cosmologically coherent with the 7th century and with the 21st century. We're saying it has no contradiction. We're okay. saying it's preserved. I'm willing to defend these positions right now. I don't need to go nowhere. Or I would love time. to. I would love to have a debate with you on I, this topic. Quran has no contradiction. Yeah, we're, not, we're not debating. This is not a debate. This I is know. I debate know. Works. I'm having a conversation. I'm, I'm, you're throwing things at me. I'm saying, look, I'm happy for whatever you tell me now, your biggest evidence. We've seen your biggest evidences. Because you have it online. You have. You said you got 100 uh, reasons why no. you're not. Number one is because the earth is flat. I want you to stand before me and no. let me speak and then answer to me. Pardon? I, you said I want... the earth is flat. I said the Quran says you co with Layla and Nahar. I want Nahar. you. I want you to. So I want you to. I want you to, I want you to stand there. I want you to stand there and listen to me for fifteen minutes, to my biggest evidence or to my three biggest pieces of evidence. And I want you. And I want you to respond to me for fifteen minutes. You said it online. No, I. I have. I have not. No, I have not. 
that's not true. I, had, I haven't I haven't said that. That's not true. That that's not my biggest evidence. Why Islam is not. A, why not to be a Muslim? Yeah, you have a video like that. No, I have not. You, you, you do. You say you ha you count down. You're counting down the video. No. No, I, I, I don't, I don't. I, I have a video called 10 Reasons to Reject Islam," for example. But, but that is, but that is not about rejecting Islam theologically. Uh, something about science. And at the end, you said that number one is because the Earth is flat. That is uh, 60 scientific <laughs> mistakes. That is specifically about the 60 you scientific know, mistakes of the Quran. Sure. Flat, yeah? sure, sure, sure. But, 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 but no, we dealt with it's, that. No, it's, it's, no, it's not. It's not. I didn't. I didn't. That's number one. It was. It wasn't ranked. It was simply counted. It wasn't ranked according to oh, what, no, is you said, no, the, the, what is weakest. The reason you said it. You said the number one reason. Was no, I, no, I, I have not. I have not. I have not. Okay, we'll, we'll look I, back. I was just. I was just counting. I have. I have. I have three main different. I have three main reasons why Islam is definitely not true. And I, yeah. and I. And I will demonstrate them to you, and you will not be able to to justify your beliefs. I've been trying for a thousand four hundred years. Okay, look, the Quran says, and they have succeeded. Contradictions in it. Try Islam is dying. Pardon? Islam is dying. People are people are leaving it's, Islam in well, masses. You, there's going to be one third of the <laughs> world is going to be Muslim at one one third, four, uh, to ninety nine point seven percent because of birth rates and in the young age of Muslims. Because that's a big chunk, three percent because of conversion. That's no, massive. zero point three percent. That means three thousand people in well, one hundred years. About that because three million I, people. Sorry. Yes, twenty twenty to twenty fifty. Apparently, there's been four million converts. But do you know we deal with. I doubt that. According to Pew Research, you know, from what I've seen, from what Pew, I've research, seen, Pew Research also said that the number of people leaving Islam and the number of people joining Islam is the same. In America. In, and no, in the world. And uh, no, the no, people. It's the same in the world, man, because otherwise there would not be a net inflow. What are you talking well, about? No, yeah. according, to the, according to the research in which they explain, in which they explain, uh, in which they explain why Islam is growing, they, they're saying that. Uh, that, that article you're talking about, no, no, sorry, sorry, I've written this in my book as well. It's in the, in the book. No. Called, and, and, and they are. And they are what 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 they're showing is that uh, as many people convert to islam as people That's leave true. islam and and the issue and the issue here is that the vast majority of people the vast majority of people who convert to islam do it publicly while the vast majority of people who leave islam do well, it I, secretly I, because I, 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 back on that let me push back on that you see a few research published the research and i think it was in 2017 or 18 and they actually said that the amount and by the way this is not an argument against islam yeah anyways let's go with it it's, of course it's not let me just let me just say let me just come back on it so if you research said that uh, the amount of the the, the 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 amount of conversion into Islam is the same as the amount of conversion outside of Islam. Yeah, that was in the American context, and they had a methodology of a thousand people that they interviewed, and they interviewed them on the telephone. And the majority of people that they interviewed on the telephone, by the way, were actually non-speakers of the English language. And we see that in methodology. If you go to methodology in the Pew Research, they you have to look at the they've got a methodological um, forecast here, yeah? and they say that uh, a lot of them were actually Shia. Shia uh, came from like uh, Shah. Uh, Iran, and then when they came, when they came to uh, what do you call it, America, they couldn't speak English, and they were already they were already refugees. So it was a disproportionate number of Shia that were representing that study, Iranians that represent that study, and clearly, and I, I used to think that as well. I used to mention that to the my congregationists that look the amount of people that are leaving the same. But when I looked at the methodology, and when I actually uh, published on this, because I actually published on this, and I've seen all of the basically the studies, the demographic studies in a book that I've written called The Scientific Deceptions of the New Atheists, which is actually free of charge in the Sapiens Institute. You can get it for free. And all of those demographics are actually flawed. What we actually find, to be honest, is that there is more people coming into Islam in the West than there are people leaving. And th that's pretty much a general rule. I'm uh, looking at it right here. It's not about America. It's, it's, gener it's general. It's considered global. It is from uh, oh, Pure like Research 2015, uh, April. Uh, projected growth between 2010 and 2020 uh, to 2000, 2050. No, you're, you're getting it wrong. Do you know why? Because if it was a, if it was about all of the people in the world, yeah. So if it was about all the people in the world, then it's not about America. How could there be a net in inflow? Because they looked at 2010 to 2050, and they said there's going to be that there was three million excess net inflow. So there was three million converts. But by the way, from our experience, because we do we deal with converts all the time. From our uh, experience, in-house studies, we found that the majority of converts are actually private converts. Just like when people leave Islam, they're privately Islam, uh, that, that is definitely not true. Most, most you know people can... true? What's, what's your evidence? Be because, because we see it. We don't need evidence for that. You don't need evidence for something that is so yeah. obvious out in the, out in the world. Logical point. You know, the vast majority of people who leave Islam do it, do it privately. They don't do it publicly because they are scared. Yeah, I, I, I know... I know many people who are, who do who do it uh, privately, including in Muslim countries, they have to, to have they have to have it on their on their ID cards, for example, yeah, and they don't get out of it. That Whereas people who converge because they're a part of a culture, a dominant culture, which is to say Christian. It's not true. It's not true. I, do you know how we know it's true from the British? How, how do you know it? 
Yeah, because what, there, there was a study that was done. It's also in my book in the bibliography you can find. That there was, um, they looked at census data because in, in England, in the UK, you have census data every 10 years. And that's probably one of the best. It's like the demographic gold standard. So they looked at uh, census data 2001, 2011, 2021, 2000. Uh, we haven't done 2021 yet, yeah? But they looked at 2001, 2011. I think they looked at um, 91 as well, yeah? So this, in, the, in that period of time, they found, they look at the amount of people that identify in the census as Muslim. And so they, when they churned the numbers together, they found that actually, yeah, the numbers were one thing. But when they did uh, small scale uh, sociological studies, they, they found that converts were less likely to tell their family members and therefore write in the census data that they're Muslim. Therefore, Most likely, we, that's all we have. No, no, Most likely is all we have. They are. It's usually a house, the, the leader of the household is writing it down. So they'll write down, oh, my, if their kid has uh, like a 16 year old in their family has become Muslim, they don't know about it. They're going to write Christian because they don't know that this guy's become Muslim. We know, like, well, I, I, I could say, I could say people who smoke are less likely to go to the gym. That doesn't mean. Area. It's, a, it's, 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 it's a dark area. We don't exactly know the numbers. Exactly. I know, but but I, you know, I, you know, you know, I, I could say people who smoke are less likely to go to the gym. That doesn't mean that people who smoke generally don't go to the gym, or that the vast majority of them don't go to the gym. It, it just it it may it may just mean that two percent more of people who smoke don't go to the gym. What, we, what we're saying is that Islam. It's not, it, that's not how statistics work. No, 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 it's, it's this analysis because you're talking about correlation versus causation. We're not talking about that. We're it talking is. about the fact that when converts become, when people become Muslim, they're also quiet about it. Just like when they leave Islam, they're quiet about it. Well, we don't have any substantial evidence for that. Pardon? We don't have any substantial evidence for that. I've just... No, I've no, 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 before, there is, uh, there is good evidence there from... There is no good evidence. You can refer to my book for that, if you like. Fine, let's, let's leave it Let's leave it that way. Uh, as far... no, but before we leave it, I just want to say something, okay? Before no, we... um, I, I would like to, I would like to reiterate, I would like to reiterate, I would like to reiterate, reiterate the one thing. I was, uh, I challenged you to... You've, you've, you've I would. I challenge. I challenge you to discuss. I, a big audience of Muslim people. This is one of the biggest YouTubers, Muslim YouTubers on the net. You're not going to get an opportunity like this again. Believe me. Your opportunity. Is, <laughs> believe me, Adam Saleh, I'm wrong. You're one of the biggest yeah. Muslim. 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 The biggest, the biggest yeah. podcast, the biggest Muslim podcast in the world. We have most. Oh, most of our viewers are Muslim, and in this podcast, we are. Uh, you got the biggest. Yeah. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I would like to. I would like to reiterate what, what, I, what I said before. Um, I would. I think. I think it would be. I think it would be a unique thing. I think it would be a unique thing for an, for the, for the biggest uh, for the biggest ex-Muslim influencer and the biggest Muslim apologist of our time to come together and to actually have a debate on the topic. Is, 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 is Islam the truth? Not this. I, I said ex-Muslim. He's not an ex-Muslim. So for the for the biggest uh, ex-Muslim and the biggest Muslim apologists to come together and to have a debate on whether Islam is the truth. Face to face. What did you look uh, of all Jews? So are, are, you, are, you, are you accepting the initial offer that you accepted, which is an online debate or not? Well, I don't want to. I don't want to look. So we, we have we have had a conversation. So so you have no conversation here talking to me, but you have a conversation by having with having an online debate. No, what I'm saying to you is this: Look, you have an opportunity. Your 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 goal in life is to try and show people that people Islam is false. You have an opportunity. With I will use this opportunity once you allow me to have a even, debate. You even want to oh. on that? Listen, like, this isn't going nowhere. He, he already this had. Is, he, this isn't going nowhere. He already had his. And today, you you asked a bunch of questions. Muhammad Hajjab answered a lot of your questions in in a very great. He didn't answer anything. <laughs> You, you, you don't even know anything about Islam. You just said that at the beginning of our conversation. What are you talking about? That makes, that makes you, <laughs> what do you know about Islam? You, you, just, you just openly said that you don't know anything about Islam just before we started. <laughs> Where are your credentials? He knows more. He, no, he studied like, this. He has the green thing. I'd rather have someone who I know. I'm, 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 saying, I'm, I'm saying... I'm saying... Reason this, right? Slim, I'm so. saying how I'm saying how can you judge this when you clearly said that you have no, no, no knowledge in Islam? I'm judging. No degrees. Look, I have no training. I have no degrees. Well, you have you have certificates. What are you good at? I can, you, you know what I could? You, you have you have three. You have you have you have you have three certificates, right? I could I could go and I could. And of leaving Islam was a. I, I could I could currently I could pay four thousand dollars to get a certificate in Islamic studies and then I would be qualified to to to, to the <laughs> you gotta do ten years of study. Honestly, ten honestly, years have you studied have you studied each of your four areas for ten years all together not not of course not because you you have you have studied you have you have studied you have studied for you have studied some of them for just for just six months or nine months I could apply for 
you, you're not getting this. Ha, have you not? Have you not? Object you have you not? How long have you studied for a certificate? Look, how long you, have you studied for a certificate? Pardon? For how each long one, have you for a on, like for the ones like I've done the political philosophy. Look, how long, long have you studied for the certificate? I'm That's talking not, about certificates, not about not about not about degrees. Like three years, two years for another one, one year for another one, two years. One year. Another, you can get a certificate in Islamic studies for one year. I could go and pay four thousand dollars and do that. Would that mean I I am now qualified to, to debate Islam? With you? Islamic seminary, though. Like no, I, I'm asking you the question. I'm asking you the question. People have to go through Islamic seminary. Like I'm asking you the question. The, the seminary in Islam, then you can come back and talk. I'm asking you the question. Here's the, point. Here's the thing: is look, I'm asking you a question. If I, if I paid four thousand dollars, do you agree? Four thousand dollars, and I got a, I got a, I got a. In Islamic studies, would I then be qualified to debate yeah, Islam? Do you, know what, do you know what it comes out it comes down to? Let me tell you something. Yeah? I'm asking you a question. Can you just answer the question? Yeah. If I paid four thousand dollars and got a certificate in Islamic, oh, you got to show your work. You got to do your work. <laughs> go and do the, what are you laughing at? What are you laughing you're at? Certificates that you got in one year because that's how a certificate works. You're not going to go to a doctor and say, "Well, what, I'm, what, what certificates you have?" Oh, I've just been doing online videos. So, no, so you're not qualified. Has certificates. The guy has his uh, qualifications. Otherwise, you're not going to go to that doctor. So, Muhammad Hijab is. Why should we go to you for Islam? Why? Hijab is qualified in four areas, including having certificates of one yeah, year. I would, not be, but I would not be qualified in Islamic studies by getting a certificate. I could talk about political if I want. I could talk about history if I want. I could talk about comparative religion. You don't, if I want. You don't even understand freedom of speech. You don't understand moral philosophy. Why? Because I've been through processes. You haven't. You, you have. You have the poorest understanding of moral philosophy that I've seen in my life. That's according to a layman, do you get it? You're a layman. Well, I will. I will de it doesn't matter whether I'm a layman or not. I will. I will never study philosophy. You have a misunderstanding. I said to him, "Look, I don't care what you prescribe for me. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what you should prescribe for me." You I would, I would just like to ask a, a, a very brief question, Muhammad Hijab. A very brief question. Can I ask so you a very brief question? I'm not ready for this because you know what? You're, here's, here's the reality. Of this I ask you a very brief question. You want the public or you've asked think, me? I've been, you you've think, been questions. I've allowed you to ask me all the questions. Do you think that because I am an, do you think that because I'm an atheist who doesn't believe in God? Do you think that because I'm an atheist who doesn't believe in God, that means I have no morals? And, uh, okay, let me ask you. Let well, me, no morals by ripping you up ripped up the Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you, you, I'm, 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 I'm sorry for people like you. I'm sorry for people like you, Apus. I'm genuinely sorry think, because what are you doing with your life Adam, right now? Adam, Adam Sally, you have an IQ of 80, 85. Maybe. Oh, you don't have an IQ. Stop talking to me about Apus. Of one. You're, you're, a loser. you're a loser. One, so you're a loser. one, one is not how IQ works. So. <laughs> Turkish people do not claim you. Turkish people do not claim you. I don't care if he's an athlete. He's, he's a creative. No, no. I, I, I am deeply sorry. If you insult me, I will insult you back. That's what just happened. I'm going to No, no, no. So, Adam Salah has an athlete. Muhammad Hijab. Body. I'm, ask, I'm asking you a question. I don't care. I, I have no muscles here. I have no muscles. I don't care. It means nothing. Relax. relax. What you're saying? You your child. Your masculinity means nothing. No, no, no. I'm, asking you a simple question. I'm asking you a simple question. Because I do not believe in God and because I am an atheist, do you, as somebody who claims to be an expert in philosophy, do you think it is right to claim that I can have no morals and that it is therefore for me completely indifferent? You, what, ripped the Quran. What, you laughed at someone eating the Quran. You, 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 like, you just go ahead, go ahead, ask the, the question. As far as I have no morals, you have no morals. No, 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 let me answer his question. Let me answer his question. Honestly, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not saying that atheists cannot have morals. Do I you would, said that. Atheists, what? You said that to me. No, 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 no. He, he, he just goes. said no. He just said he, he doesn't no, believe that. that. No, no, hold on. Let me tell you my answer. Yeah, 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 answer yeah. Can I okay, answer? Go ahead, go ahead. Answer. Sorry, Amar. Right, come on. Go so ahead. I'm, I'm not saying that atheists... That's never been what I said. I've never said that. I'm very careful with my articulation. Sure. I never say that atheists can never cannot have morals. What I will say is that an atheist cannot have a claim to objective morality, which is different. So I'm saying this. On an atheistic worldview, yeah, you can't tell me anything morally. You can't tell me you should do this and you shouldn't do this. Why? Because on, <laughs> because on atheism, you have no mechanism which anchors morality. The expert. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. I've done, I've done the work. You haven't. That's the difference. There's <laughs> even even people like John Stuart Mill. We talk about liberalism. Yeah, they candidly tell you there is no proof that can tell you objectively in the book of uh, on utilitarianism that there's no proof to show that this is an object of morality so what i'll say is that you can never make you can your major arguments a lot of your major arguments yourself and many of the people like you 
against Islam is how is this and this is immoral, this and that. What I'm saying to you is that morally speaking, yeah, as an atheist, you have no anchorage, meaning you cannot claim anything is objective. Otherwise, I'll say to you, look, give me your mechanism because you're on the record of saying that bestiality is okay. You're on the record of saying that I'm, I'm, I have never said that. I have, I have, I have never said that bestiality is okay. I've never even talked about bestiality. It's okay, you said. Incest is okay. No, I have never said that either. You said that. Fuck. You think incest is okay? I have. Right? I, have I have never said that. Whoa. I've seen that DM know, uh, on Ali Dawa, and I see that DM. You I have never. Said that. I've seen what you wrote. Right, we will see. I have you never said that. Hey man. I, I've, I've, I've said to Ali, I've, I've said to Ali Dawa. He asked me, "Do you think it's okay for a for the father and the son to have sex?" I yeah. said, "If there was no harm to society oh. and to the individual." Whoa, oh, yeah, no harm to society. Like, whoa, whoa, hey, like, yo, shut wait. up. I said, if there evidently was no hey, harm yo. Society and, to, and, and to the individuals in having incest, then there would be no problem with it. But oh, that, is not, wow. that, that is not reality because, oh, but that is not, but that is not reality because, oh, but, going because on. such a intercourse will have uh, harm on the individuals and the society, which is why incest is not okay. Right. Can you what, what I clearly said. Can you objectively prove the harm principle. We can. We could go lengthy into the discussion of, on no, that. No, I'm, right now, you said something. You I made. Will, a, I, will not, I will not discuss you it. You to prove I will not discuss it. I'm correcting. I'm correcting this language. You objectively prove the harm principle. No, I will not. You cannot. That's the answer. That you I will. I will. I can, and I will. No, within, you can't. Within, milk within, within this week it. or next week, I will not. Know. It's not pretend to be. Oh, a wait, wait. I do not believe that there is in, intrinsic uh, objective morality. I don't believe. You don't believe in morality. I don't believe that there, that there is inherent objective morality. Which does not, which does not objective morality. Do you understand philosophy at all? There, there, is, yeah, there, is, there, there is morality. There is morality. There is morality on a descriptive level and then on, uh, on, 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 a, on, a, on a level in which you prescribe it to society. I do not believe that intrinsically there is objective morality in the world. I do not believe. Sorry, I don't understand that. Sorry, I do not believe that uh, a human who is who is born into the world yeah. has has an objective has objective moral values. I do not believe that. No, that doesn't I, make sense. What you're saying. I do not believe that. that. I, I believe that there may be flawed. Your articulation is flawed. Your articulation is flawed. What is flawed? flawed? No, do you know why? Because what you're saying is, I do not believe when a human being has it's, morality is not possessive in that sense. You're you're you're, you're all over the place. You either no, believe I'm, I'm saying, saying that okay. either believe I, objective morality or you don't. You're I, either subjectivist I, or subjectivist. Which one of the two are you? Are you subjectivist I, or objectivist? Fine, I, I do not I do not agree. Let, let, let me say it in different words for you because you don't understand basic. No, because uh, you don't understand English as a uh, first. Language. You don't understand I, basic English. Don't try uh, it. Don't try for, it. You for didn't make sense in your articulation. Now you're trying to make me look like the person. No, your articulation is flawed. So to now say in a proper way. And for a brute like you, I would like to say uh, there is a difference between saying a society has intrinsic morality and the difference between saying a, a society should have morality or a society should have morals and society has well, morals. Do morals exist in reality or not? Oh my yes or do you, that is not how it works. That is not how this works. Yeah, really. So there's something that's called moral realism. What's no, not an atheist, an atheist, an atheist. objectively real or not? Are they real or not? Are they are, are, are moral? The person can have objective moral values, subjective moral values, relative moral values, and moral. Are they, are they objective or subjective? What in your view? What say it again? I didn't understand you. Okay, my my question to you is so simple. Like, what? my question to you is what? morality. Is it objective? Or not? Are there such a thing as objective moral? I don't think so. So okay, good. So 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 then, the, all of your moral arguments have have collapsed against Islam. No, they have not. You've collapsed all your moral ones. Yes, no, they have not. Yeah, that, because that, anything that, that you say that, about that, Islam that, now, that's not that's not that you say about Islam now morally doesn't make that's sense. Not how morality works. It's morality. That's not how morality works. You do not morality works. So you have to believe it's objective. It's not true. It's not a, nihilist, a nihilist, for example, can be a nihilist in uh, in so far that he does not believe that there are natural moral values. Nihilism is not synonymous with objectivity. Right? What are you talking about? A nihilist may believe that there are no, yeah, yeah, there it's, are it's, are no moral values. values. They're not subjective. It's not synonymous. Nihilism is something which is... Of course it's not. Nihilism yeah, is, no, you're, nihilism you're, you're a subjectivist. If you're a subjectivist... I am not. You said you're not an objectivist. You must be a subjectivist. What are you then? No, stop pretending you... Stop wait, pretending wait, 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 did you just say, if I'm not an objectivist, then I must be a subjectivist? Is that you have to be. If you're not, if you don't believe in objective morality, what are you laughing at, man? So if I, if I don't believe in objective morality, then I have to believe in subjective morality. Yeah, because either objective or subjective, you've got two choices. What's the third option? Go on. 
Thank you. Thank you. I will oh, go you're on. Not even on A level. I, will, bro, I swear to God, Wallahi, Uqsum Billah, you're not even a C grade A level. You're not yeah. even a C grade. If I were to, I was to mark your work, bro, you're not C grade. You're not on, bro, a year 10, year 11 in ethics can get a better understanding of you. I think a 16 year old, a sharp 16 year old, will see that you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Now, what is the other two, option? You've got subjective morality. Subjective morality. What's the third one? Two thousand years of, of moral philosophy. So go and say it. What's the third nothing. option? You've either got two thousand years of moral philosophy, all for nothing, because you've got nothing. Subjective yeah. morality. Subjective morality. What's the other one? What is what's it? Do you do you think do you think there is no other option besides objective morality? Yeah, yeah. I'm saying no. there's only it's either objective or subjective. Is what's the third one? You so you think there is only objective morality? Oh my god! What's the third one? To say. <laughs> What are you laughing well, at? That's not an answer, I, bro. I, I will make a video response to you because I think this will be you hilarious. You don't need to make a video response. If it's not objective, it has to be subjective. No, it's not. You're going to get laughed at. You know, cosmic yeah. skepticism guys, they're going to laugh at you, bro. No, they're going to associate with this idiot. Of all due respect, you have no they, they can. level they can. understanding of what I have, just, I have I just asked you. I have I have just... If it's not objective, it has to be subjective. There's no other option. What can it be? There's no crossover. There's no middle ground. It's either objective or not. You're, you, that, that's the, that's why why you got it all wrong. That's why your criticisms against Islam are flawed because you don't even have a basic understanding of moral philosophy. You don't. So and you can't pretend to to the Muslim viewers who don't uh, understand philosophy very well. Oh, you don't say, know it. You I have. Always, no, <laughs> I want to say one thing. <laughs> you don't. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying to all those viewers who don't understand philosophy very well. I would like to say uh, <laughs> so. What <laughs> Mahmoud, what Mahmoud Tijab said about uh, objective morality is, for example, completely wrong. Which is, uh, go on, give me the third option. If, if if I don't if I don't believe in objective morality, for example, if I'm yeah. an atheist who doesn't believe in objective morality, yeah. that, that doesn't mean that I cannot have objective moral values. It can mean that my okay. objective. You either believe in objective morality or you believe in subjective morality. There's no third option. What's the third? No, option? You, have, no you have just clearly said as of when I, when I asked you, you have What's just clearly... third option. What is the third option? Stop laughing. Stop when pretending. I, when, I just, when, I just, when I just asked, when I just asked thank you, whether, thank you. When I just asked you about whether an atheist can have objective morality you said that if oh, i don't believe in god oh right. my god we know he said that what's the third what's the third i'm not i'm not doing the third option atheists I'm not the third option you had hope in this guy the great atheist, uh, atheist can have objective morals an bro, atheist, an atheist an objective. Is objective there's an no atheist, third option an atheist, third option? An atheist may have objective moral, morals that are what's the third option they have objective morals that are not based on the belief in God, for example, I'm which is... Not, that's a different discussion. You either believe in objective morality or subjective morality. You're saying there's a third option. What is the third option? I will not say it to you. I will surprise you with that. There's no third option. You will not there is a third option. I, let, let's, let's leave it by it. I asked you the question. Look, I've, I was the one. I was the one. I was the one. With all due respect. Mom, did you have Look, what, was, I, was I not the one? Allow me to teach was, you. was I not the one who asked you the question? Allow it. Was Just I not the one who asked you the question whether there are only three? Proof. Submit to the knowledge. Allow it. What was, I not, was I not the one who asked you whether there are only two? Pardon? I was the one. I was the one who asked you yeah, whether you are. Objective or subjective. What you got the third? Right, right, we're done. We're done. I asked you this question because I want yeah, to respond yeah, yeah. to you. What's the third option? If it's not objective, it has to be subjective. I want to respond to you because I know how you. Well, why don't you? Why don't you answer the question? You're not answering. He's answering all your questions. Not answering his question. He's not going question. to have a debate with me online. Empty head. That's the reason why. No, for the same reason that you're not going to have a have a debate with me online because you're scared. Oh, look, look, you know what? You know, I, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't I mean, think he's even going anywhere. I know. I said at the side. You haven't shown your abilities to be. I, I am playing. I am playing. I am playing, playing by my standards. You're playing by your standards. Whatever. I'm playing by my standards. I will. I will take my discussions to my platform and respond to you. And people will laugh at you. People you really have nothing to say, do you? You really have nothing to say. Because here's the thing: we talked about <laughs> science, and we really. I, I, I challenge you to a debate on whether Islam is the truth, and you have been scared no to debate on simple topic with me. No one. <laughs> which you've said, you said you don't believe in objective morality. If you don't believe in objective morality, which means this means any, this is, you know what the implication is. The implication is this: the implication is any argument you get, make against Islam, which is moral. If you're asking about. Uh, age of consent or apostasy or a penal laws or anything you want to ask from this day onwards you have no it's right ridiculous. that is ridiculous that is ridiculous that's why, that's why. It could you can't mean that my morality it, it could it. mean that my morality is based on you to your morality I could, for example, argue that that morality is completely based on on utilitarianism, for example, yeah, which is one example. Which is Mill, example. Bentham, Jeremy Bentham, who is the who's the founding father of utilitarianism, they these individuals never said that it was objective. 
what it, it, it doesn't depend on individuals. This is not how it works. It utilitarianism, does, utilitarianism, utilitarianism, is an idea. utilitarianism is an idea. It doesn't mean that it has to abide by the who, ideas. Who, who, who made the idea of utilitarianism? Who is, the, who is the philosophical founding father of utilitarianism? That's not how this works. Philosophy doesn't work in a way that if you who, have a, who, who put forward utilitarianism? Let me educate you. Uh, you can't because I'm telling you who is the founding philosophy. father of utilitarianism. You can't even okay. answer that. <laughs> is this <laughs> another? Yeah, I love it. Have you read any of these books? <laughs> oh, one, one more question. Is this another? Have you read it? Honestly, have you read it? Is this another? Is, 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 this, is, is this another assertion that you make? If, if you abide by a certain moral philosophy, Bentham? who is he? You have to agree with the with one person. Who is Jeremy Bentham? Who is he? Is it what is what you're saying that Bro. if <sighs> is what you're saying that if you abide by a moral philosophy, you have to agree with what one certain person who founded the philosophy or who has influenced it. No, I'm not that. What I'm saying is this. That, that, that is what you just no, 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 the, the definition. I can't, I can't have a... Utilitarianism. I can't have a utilitarian... utilitarianism. What's the definition of utilitarianism? I can't have a utilitarian point of view while what? not abiding by certain... I'm asking you a basic question, man. What's the never de- answers, no question. You're not asking, you're not asking a question. What's I the definition know. of utilitarianism? For... Uh, the greatest, it, the greatest number. It, dep- it depends. For example, if, if a society decides that, right. if a society have, decides, if a society decides that some, I'm answering your goddamn question. What? If a society decides that something is good, that something is better for, for for society, to which they come as a result of the common consensus or due to new findings, then it means that this will be a law that society has agreed on, and this is utilitarianism. No, it's not really, you, that's not that's not a definition of utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is not defined like that by any moral or political <laughs> philosopher. By the way, just and I've written essays on utilitarianism. I'm really curious. I've written. By the way, I've got some something written on utilitarianism as well. It's called the good for liberalism, society, and you can find it on, for, for free. Mohammed Hajjab put it on Google. If something uh, is good for society, liberalism, that is good. Liberalism, and you can find it for free. I've written about the stuff you claim to talk about. I've written about it, bro. I've, what, will I've you know, published what, will you, what will you need to pick now? What will you correct? Well, if I've, something I've, is good for society, you, it's good. What what you you correct? To arrogate to me, you're not a professor. You're not my senior. You're just at this point. At this point, I feel like a plus you should just go. And uh, read Muhammad Hajab's books because yeah. you seem like you're very lost, they're very misunderstood with Islam. So I, I recommend you to go. One thing, one, yeah. one thing on this. Yeah. Okay, let's let's get back. Let's get back. Please, please, please. Just allow me, just for a second. Yeah. You yeah. Tell, tell I, I've just described. Just, give, me a second, give me a second. Let me just get, get educate, let me educate you. Let me share my knowledge with you. And what's wrong? You educate me from your little no knowledge from your Google okay. search. Let me educate you. <laughs> knowledge. <Let me> <laughs> Utilitarianism, yeah, really, number, the greatest for the greatest amount of people. Now, so isn't that isn't that what I just said? Isn't that what I just said? Isn't that what I just described? Hold on for a second. Hold on. You didn't. You use democratic logic. It's different. What I'm saying is what what Jeremy Bentham in his book said. What what Jeremy Bentham in his book he said. He said it's very. It's interesting because there's a Quranic argument against this. It's, It's really interesting. He said, you've got two lords. You've got the lord of pain and you've got the lord of pleasure. What the Quran says, Have you seen the one who has taken his own desires as a god? So it's interesting. The Quran has actually addressed utilitarianism in, a, in, a, in, a, in an interesting kind of way. Now, the thing is, what John Stuart Mill said is that, say if you have a gang rape, gang rape scenario, yeah? This is a common analogy that's put forward. You've got a gang rape scenario. So you've got one woman and then you've got five men and they're all having their goals with her and she's not wanting it. She's, she's getting raped, yeah? She got finished. Now, in this situation, is this good? Now, obviously, according to utilitarianism in a strict sense, it's allowed because obviously there's no harm principle in place. So John Stuart Mill said, look, in order to allow society to function, we have to put a harm principle in place. So that's how utilitarianism kind of was absorbed into social liberalism. Yeah. Now, with social liberalism, here's my point. Uh, John Stuart Mill, who really was a utilitarian at heart. And by the way, his father, James Mill, was Jeremy Bentham's friend. They were, they were buddies. Yeah. That, like this guy who wrote about utilitarianism, his father, James Mill, were friends. Now, he wrote a book. Now, in that book, he said, in, on utilitarianism, is the name of the book, on chapter four, yeah, he, he talked about proving utilitarianism. Now, he didn't, mention, he didn't name it like that. He named it a long uh, thing as Cosmic Skeptics told me in the debate. But anyway, he took like a, a long um, title. But it's candid in there. He talks about desirability, yeah? He doesn't in any way, shape or form try and say that utilitarianism is in any way an objective morality. This is the problem. You're, what I'm saying is it you're saying be. you can have objective morality through utilitarianism. It but Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill, who were the philosophical, fa- philosophical founding fathers, they candidly said you can't really have that kind of thing. It's more to do with, it, it, it's, it's not meant to be an objective morality in that sense. So in yeah. other words, if you're, you, if you're pegging your moral value judgments on utilitarianism, 
You can't go and attack the Quran because you know why? You don't have an anchorage. You don't have an so, objective so morality. So I have just described utilitarianism. The Quran says this and that. You can't I, say based on utilitarianism. <laughs> even according to those guys and all the way through to today's scholarship, I'm telling you, I've read the journals, bro. I have read the journals. I have even just described utilitarianism. You have described the same thing while telling me it was I've wrong. I've read the journals. I've read the books. I've done the research. I've done the degrees. Please. Don't don't put, don't arrogate to me, yeah. Dear I've, dear Muslims, dear Muslims, Muslims, please listen to this honestly. We have said the same thing. It's not an argument that utilitarian liberal ethical scholars say that actually utilitarianism is an object of morality. It's not. They know. I really wonder good. if you would actually release the whole the, the whole talk. Yeah, I really, I really not, have thoughts about. That. Therefore, if you want to make a moral argument against Islam and say, "Well, Islam is against this, and therefore Islam is wrong," it's a false argument. If you're basing it on utilitarian, that's your seed bed. If that's your intellectual and epistemological seed bed, it's not going to work. So what I'm saying is that now you don't you don't have to have more, you don't have to have a specific morality. And since morality is crumbled, what have you got left? <laughs> exactly, exactly. He's so, laughing. <laughs> so 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 by 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 disagreeing with me, you have destroyed me. That's how it works. My question is, what you got left? <laughs> by disagreeing with me, you have destroyed me. Is that how it works? It's not. Is that you, how it works? I'm, look, I'm not here to destroy you. You're not worthy. You, of being you, have, you, have, you have number one agreed with. You have number one agreed with my definition of of you. No. When I have described the in the same the way, the and then argue that you have destroyed it, you have responded to everything. Because I, I agree that we have disagreements. You have argued that you have That's destroyed. The this is was, at, at this point, you just sound you just sound really childish, and you sound like you have an IQ of thirty nine. Some viewers, if you want to make Islam win, you just have to respond to people and share your opinion. If, because if you share your opinion, that means you have now won. I have to. I thought you were going to come again. This is Slim. This is reputation. This guy had packed the punch. I thought he had packed the punch a little bit because he was coming rough on Twitter. He was coming tough on Twitter. Oh, he was going to crack. I thought. This guy was eating the Quran. Uh, you are an idiot. Literally, are literally. You literally. have no knowledge. You have no knowledge of basic <laughs> law. You have no understanding of Islam. Your Bro, religion is a fraud. Your religion is fraud. You're, you're, you're a fraud. You have been a post. You're a post. A post. Defend your religion. You have strong, you've you've tried tried your yeah, remove him. Remove him. Remove him. Uh, a post. It was good having you. And thank you for. I think at this point, you for you're not up to Muhammad Hijab's level. You got nothing. Way, not you. I really, nothing. You finished. No, but it's. And you finished. You're like. And you're finished. And you're finished. And you're finished. And you're finished. May may you go read the books of Muhammad Hijab and and you know see guidance. Blessings. Anyway, who cares about your wife? Would you? She's she's care about about You care about your wife, right? If people want to rape your wife, would you care about peace and blessings? Peace and blessings. Sorry, move now. Move. 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 Move.